Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Terminus Podcast. This is episode 212 for the weeks of July 22nd, 2023. I'm your host, Ellis, otherwise known as the Admiral. With me, I have, in the following order, Aiden Jensen, Jacob Durbin, Hi. and Tyler Oll. Thought I was first. No, you're not. You're not. East East has been in Japan for so long, you are above him. Or, yeah, he is above you in the list. So, yeah. Mango gobbles. So most of this podcast will unfortunately be dedicated to East in Japan. Probably not, though. Uh, Hemlock is returning as our guest. Hi, I'm Hemlock. Uh, pronouns are they, them. I've remembered the pronoun check this time. Oh, crap. Yay, Hem. Yay, Hem. Yay, Hem. Intro jump scare. Yeah, we are in sunny Ashland, Virginia. Uh, a train just went by, and uh, there's going to be no trains for the rest of this Spike to the weebs. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, don't worry, have... there's going to be plenty of revenge later in this podcast. Yeah, yeah for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, I feel like we should oh, do I... everyone else's news first, starting with the class one mantle of responsibility. Starting that with, oh, CSX. Derailed in Pennsylvania. Honestly, this was kind of unexciting. They they just they yeah. smushed a bunch of cars together. Uh, that was on the seventeenth. The following day, NS. I uh, didn't derail. I guess they just something happened. They had cars roll away, um, or they had somebody surreptitiously disconnect some cars. I really don't know. The headline is. Railroad cars problem resolved, which is extraordinarily vague, and uh, several railroad cars were disconnected from the train Tuesday morning. It says the train, like there's only one. So uh, I'm just going to blame Norfolk Southern for that. We're going to move on. Road work ahead. BNS- I, sure hope it does. I sure hope it does. Uh, just blame BNS and SFF. Well, we are yeah. getting to that. Uh, BNSF derailed 20 cars in the middle of nowhere. I believe this was in Oklahoma. They just tipped over a bunch of TOFC cars. Surprised it wasn't tornado related or strong winds related. Also, the following day, CPKC tipped over some cars as well. Honestly, none of these are really exciting. The 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 best looking wreck is probably the CSX one because they really well, scrunched up some cars. I have I have personal beef with the CPKC wreck because yesterday I decided to I decided to go an hour and a half out of my way to foam CPKC because CN has been bad to me the past couple of weeks <laughs> and then after sitting trackside for three hours I looked it up to like geez there have been no trains be real real suck if a CP derailed like a couple miles west of town and uh, I didn't find out until just now. So I thought I'd look it up. See if he put a train on the ground a couple miles west of town, and I only found out after sitting trackside for three hours. So, uh, my vote is for CPKC here because I hate them personally. At least you, at least you get to spend some nice time in the fresh air, right? I I got to go to a nice farmers market and get a liter of peach juice, which okay. was nice. That is Ahem nice. When mild inconvenience. Yeah. Uh. So. Uh. With Hemlock's mild inconvenience in mind, I am uh, going to vote for a CSX again still. What do you guys think? Uh, probably Hem's mild inconvenience, because they had a pretty big rant about it in Four Fomas. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to vote for Hem's also. Oh, okay. Because you know, per- we have a personal story with it. Oh, okay. So this time, this time like, it's Yeah, personal. train tipped over. Yeah, and so the other ones were just train tipped over. Nobody died. Okay, cool. Move on. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to continue being the 10th dentist. Uh, I'm okay with that. Um, yeah. So you can look at the articles to these, in the cargoes. Not that there is really much to say. 
for any of them. Uh, Canadian National still retains the mantle, and uh, if you have heard about a wreck, you can uh, post a link to a news article about it in our Discord server. Anyway. If you yourself are the cause of a wreck, please call Conrail. Yeah. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with train wreck, please call Conrail. Oh, I sure am a train wreck. <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, no. Me when boiler Bloody. explosion. Me when the boiler explodes. We had a right. train wreck on the community playdate the other day, but not because of an actual train wreck, mostly because I kept breaking my interlocking towers in Tolbrand. And I oh. eventually just got fed up and deleted them all. So I had have to remake that version of the map that has all the eye portals on it because the signals are permanently linked to the interlocking towers and uh, the interlocking towers are gone. So I don't really know what to do with that now. F. It's not the main... Yeah, it's not the main copy of Tolbrent, but it was annoying to set up 16 eye portals. Now I have to do that again. That said... Doing the eye portal shenanigans was a ton of fun, and everyone should do that. Eye portals are a forgotten, forgotten element I of trans multiplayer, which are so much fun. I wanted to, I wanted to join in, but my computer blue screened while I was trying to download assets for it, and I went, you know what? I'm not, I'm not doing this. Well, that sounds like a skill issue. Oh yeah, it is. Do you know why it blue screened? I don't. <laughs> it just it it fully killed itself, but I don't even know why. <laughs> trains do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was the second. It was the second time in a week it did that. So. Were you playing Sorry. trains the other time? No. Oh. Hmm. It's not good. Yeah. It's not, but I'm going to ignore this pro It presently works, so it's a problem I'm going to ignore. If you, uh... If Hamlock drops off of this podcast at any point, we should just assume their computer blue-screened and, uh... And, and they TJ. Yeah, it's, <laughs> oh, it's get TJ. fine. Um... Anyway. TJ stabs again. That's most of my... That's most of my train stuff. I mean, I rode a train into Boston yesterday to go see a baseball game with Bert and Ojilis and Ojilis' dad. That was uh, a lot of fun. but I misheard you so bad that I thought you said O'Jillies is dead. Yeah, he's dead now. Um, <laughs> rest in peace. He, he, he died. He's, yeah. he's in, in your front of the MBTA. He's in your basement. Yeah. He's in your walls. Uh, O'Jillies is stored in the walls. <laughs> can you, is stored can in we the just walls. download more O'Jillies? You can download more RAM, right? Stop uh, downloading it, it, more it, it works O'Jillies. the same way. It works it's the same way. Stored in the balls. And come is stored. You wouldn't the... download an O'Jillies, Jader. You wouldn't download Would you a download Bomber. A com? I wouldn't download an O'Jillies, no. But I download sound files. Oh no. Uh, so I think the pictures went through now. Yes, did they? Yay, they did. Okay, cool. Um. So. I think I've talked about this briefly on here before. I don't remember. Um, but I've started taking on commissions for other people. And so far, I've done stuff for East, stuff for uh, uh, Ryan, and then I'm going to eventually do stuff for Gloria. I haven't done anything with that yet. Any of the orders and parts. Um, but anyway. Uh, the first, first picture I sent, those are two of the three engines that East sent me, they're all done, and I had to download uh, download, download plug sound files onto them, wrote those on, I put some custom sounds on there as well, and they turned out really good. Microwave. <laughs> Welcome to the world of push to talk now. Mm, beep, beep, beep. All right. It doesn't go beep. I we, should we put know a microwave what a, sound on there. We do know what a microwave sounds like. But, uh, you can tell that by the way it is. Yeah. So, you're also... I know you were putting some fun sound files in Gloria's thing. I don't know what I'm going to... I haven't done anything with that yet. I'm going to try to figure out if I can uh, buy the parts now or should, I, or if I should just wait. Hmm. 
Well, if um, if you, dear viewer, have a suggestion for a meme sound to dump into Gloria's, uh, I have I have one idea. Freebird solo. Oh. I feel like the freebird solo would be way too long. Yeah, <laughs> the bell free sound. Bird. Do, 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 do. I I oh I have I have one idea and it involves Mothman. Oh no. Oh yes. All right, that's perfect. Uh, I I said that you need to put the shake hands with danger riff in, and yeah. Get so back. what else? I see. This is Ryan's thing, this Chinese locomotive, right? Yeah, I both times I brought that to um, my club to just honestly shake down, run, make sure everything worked, and just to play with it. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I hope he listens to this episode and hears about his accolades making it public. I see yeah. a CNO brass thing, which I assume was not a ton of money. Just kidding. Yeah, there, well, there, there, there's two CNO brass things, yeah, because I hate money. Yeah, fair. But I, I'm but I'm an adult. I can make make decisions and suffer the consequences of said decisions. Mm -hmm. Cope. Yeah, I'll cope. <laughs> I'll be fine. Um, yeah, the. The Mikado, that's one of the Broadway um, K2s that they released maybe two months ago when they got in. Oh, wow. And it's everything I've ever wanted for one of those. Because I, I had the other brass one that I think I've talked about. If not on here, I've talked about it in general before. And I could never really get it to run properly. There were problems with the motor. And uh, problems with the motor... Something went wrong with the the gearbox wasn't really quiet. Like it wasn't bad, but it you know it was audible when it shouldn't be. And I actually just sold it last week because I'm like, you know what? I don't oh. need I don't need two. Of the, I like it. I'm really happy with how it turned out, but I don't need two of these. And I have one that's superior in basically every way. So I'm gonna <laughs> keep the infant. I'm gonna keep the superior one. Let somebody else trick out the the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, so so that's gone. Uh, Eleven sixty is basically my well, among others, it's basically my baby now. I love that thing. <laughs> among us, runs really well. I want to bring it to the PN and run it on hills and shit. Yes, bring it out. Come visit. Eventually. Um. Then the other brass thing on there. That's. I got that, I think, the day, yeah, the day I got home, I got home from West Virginia. Like, I got home at maybe 10, and then the auction for that ended at, like, 11.30 at night. <laughs> yeah. And you got it. Yeah, I got it. Nobody else bid on it. I don't know. I, I, I must have just got lucky. Um, but that's a PFM crown, so they're high-end range. Um, a CNO F17 Pacific. It's like a, it's kind of in, similar in size to USRA, but then it's got the big Vandy tender mm -hmm. that is about the size of the locomotive. What's with the uh, drivers? They're box pock, but they're weird as hell, and I'm here for it. Is that prototype? Yeah. Hmm. That that's one of the reasons I wanted a brass one of it because. I thought about, and I've seen people do it. I've seen Gunda do it actually, where he took a probably limited heavy Pacific and had somebody kit bash it into an F seventeen, and it works. But, but they were rebuilt later in their lives, and they had the box park drivers, and I wanted that look. The uh, the box park are really something. Yeah, it's it's like four big spokes. It's like you yeah. made a you made drivers out of the Iron Cross. I just had a cursed idea, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of places you could take that idea. Um, oh yeah. Hamlock, do you want to uh, uh, cover anything beyond your disappointment before we let Tyler and East loose for the next twenty minutes or more? Yeah. So there was my various disappointments. Uh, I included a photo of the empty Canadian Pacific Main Line that I just sat next to for hours. I also 
included a picture of uh, grain that apparently leaked from a CN train. Uh, besides that, uh, I did see Via last weekend, and then I rode Via at the start of the month. Uh, included is, you know, pictures of my train on the way there, on the way back. Uh, one of the one of the Go F fifty nine, so the square nose still because I love them. Also, the sister to sixty sixty, which is currently, oh, it's sixty sixty nice. I'm pretty sure it's I'm nice. pretty sure it's CN sixty sixty nice. Yep. It is, yes, yep. that's CN6060 nice. I didn't know that that locomotive was still around. I don't know why I only thought that it was just 6060 out of the class that had survived. Yeah, no, that's that's Plinth in Sarnia, Ontario. I also, last month, uh, last month, the queer center at my university uh, made an excursion up to Toronto for the Pride Parade. So I marched in the Pride Parade, and then as soon as that was done... I bolted downtown to go to the uh, to go to the Roundhouse Museum. <laughs> I saw the compressed air porter, uh, 6213, the Jeep. I saw other things. They had the cab of an old, I think an old GE, rigged up with a simulator. And the simulator was like Trains 2010. <laughs> so I sat down and drove in Trains 2010 briefly. And did not have the heart to explain to the... Very nice, uh, very nice guy from the museum that I probably know way more about this than he does, honestly. <laughs> because he kept, I know more he than kept, you. He kept explaining to me how to play the game, and I was like, "Buddy, you you don't know the half of it. <laughs> I know very well how this works." Oh my god, that I was here before. That was it. That that's, that Texas. same thing happened. Um, at at the like Michigan Tech summer youth camp thing i went to about five years yeah mm -hmm. years ago we had a few hours where i forget what exactly like the object of the exercise was but we were doing something in trains 2010 and i'm just like like i just like this like this is my home i i know everything not everything about this game but i know enough probably more than my ta that was <laughs> or that was yeah you know, showing us everything yeah, like loading custom content. You get the expert on, the the expert <laughs> shirt. Yeah, the uh, expert I, walks. Realistic mode. Who yes. summoned the Almighty One? <laughs> you know what I, you know what I didn't do during the eye portal thing. I did not use realistic mode. It's like this is, this Gil is enough issue. effort. <laughs> Unfortunate. It's That's enough uh... effort for me to organize all the trains going around this route. I'm just that gonna. Is... You know. No, that is a skill issue. I don't. I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah. No, I know. Um, I was too busy I, I jumping into Surveyor and one... fixing interlocking towers. I think it was the only one using realistic mode for most of it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't really. So I mean, it's fun when you're only getting like uh, one or two trains an hour, and I was getting like six or seven, and trying to send stuff out. It was uh, kind of a mess. But maybe we'll be organized, more organized next time, and I definitely should fix my route. We'll Hopefully. find out. Next time. Next time. At the rail yard. No. No. <laughs> yes. You can't walk in Let here and bring up Alice's mortal, en yeah. you know, mortal enemy. Oh, 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 he, oh, you canceled me. I don't know how many times in West Virginia about that. Yeah. I get canceled. You, you, yeah. Made call out posts on his twitter.com about it <laughs> so many times. Um, anyway, I, I think I mean, we have no choice. Like, we can't procrastinate, we can't hold on to this any longer. It's time to turn it over to we have the to guy who the went to Japan go. for real and the guy who read it Japan in spirit. We have to let the weebs take the podcast for the next half hour. Yep, I, I, I will that person yeah. talk on, and none of my witty jokes went through. I, our, I've got, our man yeah. in Japan and our man. Oh God! I did not a end in Japan. I did more yeah. train stuff after I uh, have to scroll and send more photos. Oh I'm my God! Go... No, you don't. I'm gonna click gonna... on like ten of these tops. Okay. I'm gonna but, like... I'm gonna run out and get McDonald's. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I get. I'll probably be done and back before they. Before He's they just get posted it. ten. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, like, 
90, 100. Dude, I don't, I don't know how photos. many of these photos. Most I don't of them are just for reference, photos. so I can like talk about it. Fair. Porter, Porter, Porter based. Yes, <laughs> Porter. <laughs> All the Porters. I have a voice I crack. Found the Porters. Porters. Did, let's see here. Do we have? Do we have all three? Where Betsy? I need to go to Hastings. You, uh, you didn't send. You didn't send Yoshitsune. Oh, you didn't no. send. You have not sent enough Porter. You're going. To I will. I will send a photo of, of Yoshitsune really quickly. Where did Where did I have that? In? Yeah, that's probably enough photos of my Buddy, train stuff. There's so much. You right, already posted like 50 photos of Japan, and now you're adding right. FEC <laughs> on top yeah, of it. Everybody. <laughs> no! Hello, right. everyone. Oh my god. Oh, you did send a photo of you. He's just going to spend okay. all of his allocated time to talk posting photos, and then we're just going to move on to Locomotive Versus. Um, um, all right, so I went to Japan, well, the, oh, there's the Amtrak first on the train app. I saw was this monorail at the top. Um... And mo most, like, a lot of stuff at the beginning is just going to be me rambling about trains and stuff. Uh, the actual stories come slightly later in the picture frames. Um, uh, you know, went to the trains, did some real training at Kyoto Station, saw the Hello Kitty train, which is a uh, shuttle service in between Kyoto and uh, Kix Airport in Osaka. Um, and then I went to the Kyoto Railway Museum and did some train stuff there, uh, as you can see, at the massive roundhouse with, like, 20 something steam engines all the research material yes i also took like an hour of video for tyler so we can make stuff perfect in model form yeah that definitely definitely the best best interview for becoming a new technical advisor yes thank you thank you thank you um <laughs> tyler's I, just I, like I, somebody I, take my job please <laughs> um <laughs> I, I asked some funny questions. I was like, hey, Tyler, what's this? And then he proceeded to send me the video of the reverse turret. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like, hmm, yes, that answers my question. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, they have a, a B2010, which is the most adorable 04, uh, 040. It is just so stubby and small. Um, and they have I, the I, don't, I don't know if I class this thing as adorable, but sure. It's 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 a thing. It's definitely uh, stubby and small. Out. I agree with that. Uh, Ty Tyler has like a backlog of me just commenting this stuff live, like as it was going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, they had the C fifty six running. You could take train rides for I think it was like a hundred gen, which translates to like seventy cents. Imagine riding behind steam for seventy cents. Granted, it was about five hundred meters of track, and I don't think you went faster than like three miles an hour. Regardless, they did blow the whistle. Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, and my biggest surprise out of everything was Japan used position lights. Yeah, they sure yeah. do. Yeah. They learn from the Penzi. Yeah, they... we'll get to a little bit more. Yeah, we'll get to that when we hit a toe. Um, <clears throat> the Kyoto Rail Museum also has number one, which is a porter. Um, Yoshitsune! Yeah. And then, uh, I proceeded to buy some model trains, but that's not necessarily important for the story right now. <laughs> We get uh, to that later. Yeah. We'll get to that later, don't worry. Yeah, they'll eventually end up in my shop. <laughs> no, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I gave Jada plenty of opportunity to buy CNO grass. Yeah. Sure. I haven't even gone to Link Dump yet. Oh, that's something else. Happened. Wasn't there, uh, oh, God. wasn't there, like, the exchange rate was actively changing while you were there, so it was getting more and more affordable? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the exchange rate when I arrived was, like, 1, th one to 136, and when I was sending them the stuff, it was 1 to 145. And now it's back to 139, so quite literally it got cheaper just for me. <laughs> Japan threw its economy in the East was the chosen one. Just for my shenanigans. Bruh. Um, then the next two photos of our two, of our two street cars, very nicely. One of them is uh, like in a Pokemon scheme or something like that, and it was just green. It's um, Pikachu. They have quite the nice street car network in Sapporo. Sapporo was by far my favorite city in Japan. Like it was. Sapporo is in the north. wild north, Hokkaido. Yeah, it's in Hokkaido. <laughs> um, but it's it's right next to the Sakhalin Islands. Uh, I'm yep. now on the Russian hit list. Um, Putin yep. has just sent Putin just sent me a DM saying he's gonna nuke my house. Uh, what Putin have fun with that? Okay. Get a little baited. Um, and then uh, my friend 
Uh, me and a couple of kids from my class, we wanted to take a day in Otoro, which is a city about an hour closer to Russia than it's an hour west, right? An hour west of Sapporo. You should always, there, measure, you should... uh, always measure your travels by closeness to Russia. To, to Russia, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we go, we take the train. I don't have any photos, but it's this beautiful ride along the coast. The first about the 15 minutes of the track, or of the trip, is on a uh, Broadway through the middle of Sapporo. Mm -hmm. And then you just hit the coastline. And you, most of the time, you are not ten more than 10 feet away from water. It is so incredibly beautiful to like just see the coast go by. I like this photo of the nice. uh, the commuter train in the single track curved station, and uh, it just makes yeah. me think of what the MBTA would look like in Japan. Yeah. I have no idea which train you're talking. It's, it's, it's uh, he's talking about the Kiha 81 at the museum. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. Yeah, so the, the other the... problem with me putting things on screen is I have no idea what's what. Yeah, and then the, yeah. Yeah, I see the advertisement for the Shinkansen of uh, Venture Expanding to Sapporo. The estimate open date is 2030. Um, huh? And then the next photo is of the Kiha, which is the commuter train you see here. On the oldest, some of the oldest railway tracks in Japan. And the first railway in Hokkaido. Yep. This railway was opened like the 18 something. I think it's like the 1870s. 1870s, yeah. It was built by, to explain, uh, Honshu, which is the main island, had a lot of influence from the United Kingdom, whereas Hokkaido, the territorial governor, went, had a trip to the United States, fact finding trip, asked one Mr. Scott of the Pennsylvania Railroad for recommendations of crews and suppliers. See, this and is where Tyler comes in. Since back. Many people who ordered porters did three foot six inch again to keep standards, but <laughs> uh, first cars were Bill Myers and Smalls, so a lot of stuff from Pennsylvania. So yeah, the person that Scott actually got was specifically one of the I forget if he was a, specifically a civil engineer. I know he was some position in the Penzi that was kind of like on break at the moment. <laughs> I'm just casually taking vaca taking my vacation to go build out a rail network in another country. I mean, yeah. The thing is, is like these engineers were paid like in exchange rate, like millions of dollars to like work for them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, Toy got like it was bank to the point that the government was like, "We need to get you people out of here as fast as possible." <laughs> <laughs> they were basically going to bankrupt the government. Um, so yeah, they brought over some porters. Number three still is operational. Um, it's sponsored by Coca-Cola. It was rebuilt in 1980, I think. <laughs> Hold on. What? Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah, you see that little, bl like, black, uh, like, uh, engrave on the tender? Yeah, that's the Coca-Cola logo. It's sponsored Wait. by Coca-Cola. Okay, where? Which photo? Because there's the so green many. locomotive. That doesn't help. It's in the. I, I resent it. I it's resent in the it. block of photos below Jader's pictures. Wait, the porter? That's sponsored by Coca Cola? Yes. If you look on the tender, you can see the Coca Cola oh, yeah. logo. Yeah. Why? Sure, that's operational. It, it looks like a Japanese cookie. Um, it was Almost. like sugar plantation in. Like off brand cookie. It's a, it's a uh, cookie. What was that? Man, cookie. Okay, well, sugar plantation, that makes sense. But also it... porter, porter based, porter based. The soda wars yeah. have begun. Yeah. The soda wars. The, Hold up, does this uh, align with the cannon? Porter, Porter <laughs> is officially on. Event? Porter is officially on Coke's side, while uh, Vulcan is in the Pepsi camp. Yep. <laughs> okay. No, but Ham, you. I don't think you have been linked up or anything, but but you could buy. So I, actually, I'll get to this later. It's it's another thing. So then you All have right. six, which is on a little turntable inside the actual museum. You can get into the cab. I did take reference photos and videos for Tyler, who then boarded the ham. Many. Um, yeah, and you knew you knew so much about steam locomotives. Yeah, you... I went like, hey, that's the thing that makes it go forward, right? Is that Johnson's bar? <laughs> why are you Why are you <laughs> looking at Johnson's bar, bro? It's rude. Um.
And then the next photo is of a C12, little, little small tank engine. It's a tank engine C56. Don't tell me where I got the fine. That Tyler told me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, hmm, that C28 would be half a 56. That makes sense. He's like, no, it's a C12. Okay. I was like, no. Um, unfortunately, if you look uh, two co two coaches behind the C12, you see that uh, uh, electric engine. That was actually I scrapped might... last month. Yeah. Why? Um, so I was, scrapped I was, the. Uh, it was ED75 uh, and yeah. ED76 due to. Running, pretty much. Yeah. Darn. Um, so I was one of the last people to see those two engines. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And the very last photo, you have the oh, beautiful oh, battleship oh, Rambow. Oh, <laughs> that is the snowplow. I like how it's all perfectly the same shade of wood. My, you know, my wood It's also double sided. Like it has the plow on both sides. Wait, yeah, then you don't you have to turn it around. To it, then? Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. There's a pin link there. Yep. Yep. And also it has a little cupola. I do. I do see that. All right. The next image is where stuff starts to get funky. Oh, uh, where it starts to get funky because we weren't yeah. funky with the cupola. This is no, actually. This is this is where you get jealous. This is where the money so starts going. Already, oh, you know what? I, I get it. I see the big Thomas thing. You bought that, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You yeah, came no. home with the giant Thomas display. Yeah, uh, I brought it on the aircraft. plane, yeah. Yeah, um, it took up a seat. So there are these stores called Big Kama, Yoshiba Kama, Yobodaishi Kama, etc., etc. They are essentially the Walmarts Bonobo. and Targets of Japan. These stores have model sections. You can buy model trains in these stores. Imagine walking into Walmart, going to the train aisle, and purchasing an Athen engine from Walmart. There was a craft store around here that had a train aisle when I was growing up. Mm. Uh, there yeah. was a, it was called AC Moore. I wonder how many people remember that, because that company does not exist anymore. And it had a train aisle. It was mostly Thomas, but it was my favorite aisle of any store ever as a child. Yeah. So, like, unfortunately, I didn't take photos of it. Like, but you can see in the background of this photo, like, they had starter sets, actual track. You can go in and buy, like, they had, like, actual, like, equipment as well. It was no different than if you had walked into a hobby store. And they had a bunch of, oh, I, I did send a photo of the Chinese junk. Eh, that's an inside joke for later then. They also had a play rail section, or a tomi section, or whatever you call this stuff. And my yeah. god, they're obsessed with it in Japan. <laughs> Look, this this was one of three aisles dedicated to just that. Then on the next photo, uh, it's of a yard in Sapporo, where you can see some nice little trains uh, doing some maintenance. And then on the next photo, you can just buy locomotive number plates a in lot of stores. A reproduction, just... Clarify. Yeah. What? They're not some the real some. thing? I'm it's sure not. some of them are the real thing. It's, it's not the real thing. The whistles, safety valves, and stuff in the next photo are the real thing, though. Yeah, you can also just buy it, whistles from hobby yeah. shops. Did you buy the whistle? Yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, I didn't have $700. You but, tried to tell well, the well, Given, how, well, given yeah. how much you brought home, I mean, it sure looks like you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, $700 for a fully operational whistle that came straight off a steam engine doesn't seem that bad, all things considered. Yeah. Uh, uh, sure, yeah. I feel like you could ask Casey about that one. I mean, well, you know, if you're, like if if you're you were good, to go, you can like... get them for free. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if you're sneaky you enough. Have to get... Yeah, well, you could just, like, a lot of hobby stores, you just go in and, like, buy just stuff that came off trains. Oh, you want a yeah. fun little aside here? Um... There is a, uh, <laughs> there is, I need to find it. One of these places is having, have Edge Will Travel in, and they're bringing, uh, Jetto 85, and they're having a bring your whistle and we will blow it day. Oh, so that is... man. All right. He's... I gotta get a Mockingbird Hooter. <laughs> Shut the can we give him a point for that? Yeah, yeah, yes. please do. Um, um, then the next photo is the All Hail Diagram book. Yep. I think Tyler can yep. elaborate on this some. This this was really funny because East does not tell me what he's doing at the most part at this point in the travels. I got the message of, hey, is there anything you want to see in Otaru? And I'm like, 
yeah, uh, when are you going there? And then sends me a photo from the parking lot. <laughs> so, you know, so he goes to the store. <laughs> he's there, of he sends me a message to start searching, boy. <laughs> um, sends the two photos. And I'm like, look for this book. And I send the cover. It says, find me the, you know, the side of it. Do. Playing GeoGuessr with my friends. Get the Railway Museum in Saitama, the second story. Nobody can get the actual location because you can't get to the first floor on Google Street View. I know exactly where it is. I get it right. Foamer. And I look back and East has found the book. For 70 bucks. Yeah. It costs 400 bucks from any, like, Western source. Yeah. Yeah. Capitalism. Um, Capitalism. Then the next thing is a little like two axle switcher. They have a lot of those in Japan. It's super cute. It looks like the Japanese version of P and W one hundred and fifty, and I love it. <laughs> I, I love P and W one hundred and fifty. My and then my, my the favorite. next huh? the next photo is of Thomas the two four zero. A two four four. Oh, that's four. that's the picture that I've had on the screen for like the last ten minutes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tom was a two four 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 with two coaches attached to his <laughs> frame. East, um, my man, you're gonna need to pick up the pace. We're yeah, yeah, we're okay, not I, even I, like halfway through your photos. Whatever, whatever, whatever. And the next thing, yeah. we're going uh, to the Upapoi Museum because you know I, I wasn't just there to enjoy trains. I was actually there on a study abroad, so I was doing a lot of studying. We're driving to this location. I look at my window. There's just a D fifty one, just there. There. There's D fifty ones everywhere. Like if you start a museum, they just give you a D fifty one. Like complimentary. Co- a complimentary steam engine. Like it's insane. So D-51 if we do that model, here, can they? If yeah. we start a Japanese railway museum here, can they ship? Can this they send one? one? Yeah, they should <laughs> send they, one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then the next thing is a. So next to my ho- so this is when we're finally get to Tokyo. Next to our hotel in Tokyo, there's a high school, and college. Um, and in this college, they trained engineers. So you could see they have the D-51 on the left of it, like not in the photo, but like to the left of it. Um, they had a simulator where you could see people like practicing to become drivers. And on the outside, they had a bunch of advertisements being like, hi, we need drivers. Please come and learn. <laughs> um, then the next photo is of a double-decker car. These are called the green cars. Every train is laid out pretty much like how a subway is, at least like all the commuter trains. And then they have these cars, which are called green cars, which have traditional seating and you can buy an extra ticket for it, and you get a reserved traditional seat. Then the next photo is of Mikasa. Mikasa! This is the Mikasa. best train you've seen so far. Yeah, um, it was really cool, because there is a U.S. Uh, naval base next, but nearby, like next door. <laughs> so like we saw a bunch of uh, Army personnel and Navy personnel there, and also they were doing helicopter exercises. So we're just there, and the helicopters are like doing evasive maneuvering so over us, and we're like, hmm... Um, then the next is the KK line with the very nice looking 1000 uh, series train car, uh, train set. And the next photo is something that confused me. A uh, uh, dual gauge. So the KK line is a standard gauge railway in Japan. That's it's kind of unusual for novice. Since like 1920. Because um, it's a privately owned railway, so it didn't really care what the government did. Mm-hmm. Um, however, the government wanted to use their lines to transfer rolling stock equipment from one line to another before they had built their own line. So what they did is they built a dual-grade railway, and as you can see, the rails are like not rusty in the slightest. They're shiny, like both rails. So my guess is they still use this line for transferring stuff. So you can just actively see dual-gauge like stock, like just the cape-gauge stuff, and then followed by something standard-gauge. That's it's cool. really interesting. Uh... And then I took a, uh, one of the KK line trains to the one of the many Holy Lands. Where you okay. can see, the... yeah, the Northern Railway, which is a small, it's probably like 20 kilometer uh, into Urban Railway in Japan. And there's a lot of lore behind this. Okay. Um, and as you can see on the last bumper photo, there's a little frog on top of the bumper with an even smaller frog on top of that frog. Which photo is this? The, the one with the buffer. That is uh, that... uh, perpendicular I... to Mikasa. Okay. Or a diagonal to Mikasa. Oh, 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 I see. With the, there are, with the there is frogception going on. I see this. Then Froggy. the very next photo is in Akihabara, 
with uh, a very, very nice bridge just going over the city. Uh, of course, it's a railway bridge. Um, and then right below it, you can see a second railway bridge in the background. It's very cool because I have a video of two trains meeting each other here. Like one on each bridge? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. The next uh, photo is a photo of a Suica card because that's the metro card you use to pretty much get around everywhere. Um, so it stopped uh, chewing a while back. Yeah, uh, I was one of the last people. Oh, fun fact, I was also one of the last people to get a this type of Suica card because they had to remake the cards due to a chip shortage. So you yeah. can no longer get this type of Suica card anymore. Uh, the next photo is of another KK Line train. It's a special one to celebrate a baseball team, I think. Yeah, Marino sports something other. And then the next one is of a upside down monorail, which is very cool, because that's not really something you see anywhere. I think it is. Does Seattle have an upside down monorail, or is that just traditional? No, Seattle's style? Seattle is the straddling style, not this. Yeah. Mm, damn. And then I spent a full day and a lot of skin cancer cells at the Holy Land. So the first photo is unfortunately kind of destroyed by construction, but it's a very famous photo from a lot of shows oh um, that shows this crossing because this is where a lot of dramatic scenes take place. You know, <laughs> one kept on each side of the crossing and then the train goes by, you know, and it's also raining and blah, 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 blah. So this yeah. is the Northern Interurban Railway. Has a long, long history of earthquakes and blowing up bridges. Uh, I mean tunnels. In Minecraft. In Minecraft, yeah. Yeah. So this is one of the few street running railways still operational in Japan. As you can see after a couple of photos of the very, very beautiful rolling stock. Everything except the two thousands are truly stunning. Um and you can see one of the five hundred sets uh, coming down the street running here. I I just had that one up a couple minutes ago. Yeah. Um, the next photos are some photos of the road next to the uh, sets here. Uh, the most of it is single track with some double track passing sightings. Um, so uh, image uh, like uh, meets are very timed, so you can get nice photos like this with two sets. Um, trains run about every fifteen to twenty minutes, depending on time of day, and they typically run two car sets up until eight o'clock, which they switch to one car sets because of the low demand. The next photo, or two photos, of uh, sets crossing a little bridge next to Shichi, uh, Shichi, Shichi Station, uh, and the blue uh, throwback set Ooh, by him. Yeah, Hemlock left. I don't blame them. They went to go get food. <laughs> wow. No, I don't know. Um, some more sets crossing over, and then you have a 300 set, 355, which is one of the original uh, sets from like the 50s that they just never. Um, just keep rebuilding. Yeah, they just they just never rebuilt the car body. They just rebuilt the motors. Uh, every yeah, other set, they one. rebuilt the car body. And the next photo is the tightest mainline curve in Japan. It's a uh, twenty or twenty eight, I think, which is the tightest curve possible. Which is why they have to have these special articulate train sets because no other train uh, can take the curve. Hmm. If you've noticed, the train sets are articulated. Um, and in the last photo, you have a pretty nice sunset shot with the sunset in the reflection of the left train and the right train having the beautiful headboard uh, heading to Fujisawa. Um, and here's where I can talk a bit about uh, gift shops and cookies in Japan. Okay. Every single thing in, on, in Japan has its own cookies. Uh, or like merchandise store. Or Tyler, anything. add them to the list. <laughs> oh, God. Like... I, I went to the Inodin thing, and you can walk in the store, and they had everything you could imagine for sale that was Inodin related. Food, drinks, toys, memorabilia. You could try. There was a, a store where you can go in, and you can buy, like, parts of, an, like, one of the train sets that they decommissioned. You can just buy chairs from the train set. Right. Like, if you wanted to have one of the chairs or seats in your house from one of the discontinued train sets, you can just buy that. <laughs> like everything gets recycled one way or another. I mean, I can do that too. Uh, let me just go to Ozark Mountain Railcar. Uh... Yeah, st steal an MBTA like reversible uh, seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> buy buy one of the F40s before Metro buys it. Yeah, yeah. Buy, buy the stuff that they're selling off from uh, Seashore Trolley Museum. 
You can just and take so a buy, buy the buy those two vans. Yes. The, the milk vans. The next photo is of one of the like many many like fifteen track sections in Japan, and this is on the way to Saitama, which is where once again Tyler can take over. All right. He, so... he knows more about Saitama than I do. Yeah, Saitama is one of the newer museums in Japan. It was based off of the uh, Tokyo Transport Museum, which closed in like 2006, which is part of one of the old stations built in 1914. Uh, the collection is arguably one of the best in Japan. Uh, the first photo that you see there is of number one, the first steam locomotive shipped in by the British, built by, I think, Yorkshire. Um, or Vulcan, I forget which well, it two. doesn't look British at all, I'll tell you that. Yeah, because what it was is they reboilered it in the 19-teens. Mm -hmm. So it looks a little different, but... No, it um, looks extremely it was... British. I was being sarcastic. Yes, I know. <laughs> I was also being sarcastic, but it was reboilered. Um, and the private railway that owned it until they had to trade it back to the Japanese government railways, has there's a plaque on it saying, you know, goodbye, we'll miss this. Uh, of course, you have Benke, the Another other quarter. quarter. Yes, with one of the original director's cars. There were six passenger cars built uh, originally for the line in Hokkaido. Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, before, before you continue, I forgot to mention him. You could also buy uh, Porta uh, number plates at a lot of stores. And you didn't get me one? No, because, you know. Uh, I I, actually, you. I, I bought you a BSNR6. Or a BSNR6 <laughs> or whatever it is. S R N R L S M H. Sure, that, you know that, the that, two yeah. foot? That. You're fake friend. I'm I'm canceling you on Tumblr. <laughs> yeah, I'm making a call out uh, post. I'm making a call out <laughs> post on my Tumblr.com. <laughs> Great. Um, C fifty one five. Yeah, so C fifty one there is number five was one of the ones that was specifically chosen for the Imperial train service. Um, they would have specific engines across the country that were kept in good condition for whenever the emperor wanted to go around. It has the imperial chrysanthemum and two flags. Flags were only put on when it was actually in service. Um, chrysanthemum as well, but the, fly the chrysanthemum would be there uh, whether it was selected for the service or as the backup engine. Uh, then the flags would be put on if it was the operational. You know. Yeah, j just in case a couple of B-25s came by and strafed it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the flags provide, um, the chrysanthemum provides extra armor. It actually is the shield generator. Yeah, it, yeah, it really messes yeah. with the volumetric mm -hmm. shells of the aircraft, you know? Yeah. That it's, one pound! The, the funny part about the C-51 is it's based on the 8900 class, which came from ALCO. Uh, weird thing of ALCO is the progenitor for all of the Pacifics and Hudsons in Japan. Uh, Next engine there, C-57-135, this class, nicknamed Ladies, Ladies was... not one for... across your face. <laughs> 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 I think you should get a point for that one, too. I, yeah. I do, oh, I do boy. agree. <laughs> boy, <no. laughs> uh, hold on, hold on, I'll go, I'll go put it down. Yeah, thank you, Hub. Uh, <laughs> 145 here was the last steam locomotive to pull a revenue passenger service on JNR in December 14th, 1975. East was very close in Hokkaido to the last line that ran. Um, freight service ended for passion for steam in December 24th, 1975. The locomotive that hauled that last one was supposed to be preserved, but was destroyed in a fire, a roundhouse fire in 76. Okay. Uh, um, EF. The very next engine you know, is Taki. <laughs> <laughs> Taki won't know what I'm talking about if if, if he watches the podcast. It's just the, it's the duck engine. Yeah, it is. It is it's the duck the, engine. It's the one with the bell. Quack. That was. Um. It was running regularly for yeah, excursions the, until like the early 2000s, which is weird. The the crimson the brown chin. <laughs> yes. Um, a very interesting part about C-57-135 is that it, the whistle still works, so they have a demonstration every day at 4 o'clock where they blow the whistle, um, but they actually advise you to stand like 100 feet away from the engine because it's in such an enclosed space. It is so incredibly loud. You can hear it from the other museum building. <laughs> yep. Like, imagine being at the B&O Museum and being like, 
uh, at the like second building and hearing a whistle from the main shed. I just want to uh, say that uh, we probably shouldn't spend more than like another 10 minutes here and there are right, 70 we'll photos remaining. So we'll maybe right. don't go one content. by one. You then, do. Yes, I speed went run, to, please. Then I went to Singapore, saw the shore, saw some leopards, saw what looked to be a brandy, but it isn't, but it has Bushmaster, saw the car from Halo. Wait, um, the the, the a, warthog looking on. thing. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. I I see. I see what you. Yeah. Fair uh, enough. Then I went to Taiwan and uh, took a tour of a nature area, which actually has a mainland running through it. Um, this mainland also runs through a city, which you can see in the next uh, photo, where they do lantern burnings on the tracks. And so uh, they have really loud like sirens that go off and lights start flashing when a train approaches. All right. Um, and there's a cat that was for Tyler. And then there's a photo of the DMU sets, which the line runs. And also, uh, they use position signals in Taiwan as well. Uh, and they also still use caboose or cabis or cabooses or kabai in Taiwan. Vans, they're brake vans. Brake vans, yeah, that's what they are. Guards no. van. Uh, oh, then man. the next yeah. uh, image is of a E233-3000 set, which is the Tokuru Ueno line. Uh, it is, as you can see, the green car is from earlier front and center. Um, the entire thing cost me one hundred dollars sure. for. 10, 11 cars, something like that. 10 cars. Um, it is powered. It does have lights. The lights on the engines do function. They also have rotating uh, uh, display boards. So it is incredibly impressive for how cheap it was. So when El remember when Ellis said we shouldn't go photo by photo, and then he spent uh, like yeah, a full I'm, minute talking I'm about going, this one I'm photo? Go then the next image is of the C59 I bought, because I love the C59. Then we have the Hello Kitty Chain constant, and then 700S, then the uh, JR500 uh, constant, the train with the... I don't think you uh, understand what I mean when I say don't go photo by photo. Yeah, right? I'm, 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 going, I'm skipping photos. I'm just going over the... <laughs> Like, the audience can't um, even see half have... the shit you're describing. There's no way Ellis uh, is keeping up. That's, oh, that is completely accurate. Shush. I'm not paying attention. Oh. I'm half paying attention. <laughs> let's, let's, go, let's go to the um, Yamato Museum. We went to the Yamato Museum, then we saw the nuclear dome, then I saw some freight trains, and we're good. <laughs> this, My guy, looks, it's... this looks way more like a duck than the other thing. I just want to say that. Which uh, one? The guy in the M700. Uh, oh, I do so probably. I do the N700, the 700. The bullet trains are, are goofy. goofy. They're stretchy. Yeah. I'm I'm more into the American uh, vision of high speed, which is you make it a blunt end. Fuck you. Yeah, F U aerodynamics. I'm into the metro liner idea of high speed rail, which is being you put a blunt end on it and you make it go hard enough that the blunt end just pushes the air out of the way. If it does not shatter the windows of the adjacent commuter train, you're not doing it right. Alright, there's the dome. There's a bunch of these. Also. What is this little rail car? The blue, red, and white one above the anime girls. The anime girl. Only. Nope. Nope. East, nope. are you there? It's one of the Kashima DMUs. Mm -hmm. It's a little line that isn't associated with JR, so they have their own ticket pass, which calls the whole story, but we don't have time to say it, talk about the story, so. I mean, we have another, you know, I gave you another 10 minutes, you used four of it so far. Uh, just basically to get there, we had, oh, that, whatever. Um, we had to use an express ticket, um, but we, there's no uh, thing to check out of the express ticket before you get onto the uh, non jr affiliate line. And so when we got to the station, the guy was like all confused because like, what do you mean you have an express ticket? And then he's like, oh, okay. So then we spend the day in Hawaii, right, we come back to Mito Station, which is the JR transfer station. Um, and then we have to ask the attendant because our cards aren't working. It's like, oh, it thinks you're still on the train. So it's trying to charge us like $500. What? Um, so we got it that sorted out. They only ended up charging us like, I think it was like 20 bucks for the whole trip, which is really good considering we were on the train for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, went to Ori, did some things, bought another steam engine. My first day back, I went to do some FEC stuff with Siebs. 
um, caught a power move pretty much. Uh, saw the last operation of DC-10 in commercial service. Um, visited the local live stream railroad. Didn't you uh, join that one too? Stuff. And then ran my Mikado at a club in Fort Myers, which is really fun. And then this morning I saw a CSX train. Nice. You want to tell them about the story of the sprinting like half a mile? Uh, what? How much time do we have? And you get another five minutes. So, uh, my friend Michael and I, we were walking up uh, from a mall. Um, and this was at like 9 something p.m., like it had just closed. And we see, um, so we're leaving the mall, and the station is about, uh, half, about half a kilometer away. And it, maybe a little less. And it's on one side, it's obscured by a parking garage, and on the other side, it's obscured by a building. So you can see maybe like 150 meters of track, um, like from the edge of the station to where the parking garage is. Okay. So we see our, the last train for like the next hour, because it's like, you know, nine o'clock, um, pull in. And like we see it suddenly go by, and I look at him, he's like, hey, is that our train? He's like, no. Uh, he looks to me and says, like, hey, is that our train? And I'm like, uh, I think so. And I'm looking, like, yeah, that's our train. And he, well, like, if you like, should we run? It's like, yeah. So we go, we basically sprint half a kilometer. Like, we were dead out of breath. Um, yeah, I've been there. Uh, to catch the train, we swipe our cards. Like, we're filming the train, get our cards out. We run up the stairs. Uh, as I, like, run into the train, I hear the alarm start to go off for the doors closing. Uh oh. Um, and I see his shadow, like, coming up the stairs so i'm like hurry up um and that gets all of the japanese people to look at me because you're supposed to be quiet on trains but the trains are dead silent um and so he runs up the stairs the doors start to close i see his face come out as i like go to put my hand out to like prevent the doors from closing the doors don't reopen when they feel pressure uh -oh. they will shut they'll just guillotine so suddenly... you yeah. Nice. So suddenly I'm like, I have to stick both my hands out and I'm like struggling to hold open these doors. They weren't like weak by any measure. He sees me struggling. He like lunges forward and like as the doors like forcibly close my hands together, he like jumps and dives through the doors. And all of the Japanese people around us are giggling at us. <laughs> yeah. Look, look the, at these. The, making that for a driver 10 seconds late and now he has to be sent for re education. Yeah. Poor man. As to, uh... Yeah, I would... No, 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 no. I feel like you covered, like, the whole damn country. Just, not by anything other than the sheer volume of trains and, uh, mostly trains on display. Because I think about the sort of density of trains on display that I'm used to, and I see all these other things on plinths that you saw, and it's like, you're... You have, you know, you're Mr. Worldwide yeah. of Japan. But, but, you know, East didn't cover the most important thing. Kiso. There, That's true. There's no Kiso here. What yeah, gives? there's only one of the o 4 twos left over there. There's a few other o 4 twos, but only one from Kiso. And it was kind of out of the way. Yeah, um, so a lot of things. didn't go to Oigawa because it's like a two-hour trip by Shinkansen. And you have to yeah, take like 30 or... minutes to backtrack. Yeah, or yeah. Ome, or a lot of other things. We didn't send you to get a picture of the uh, the speed record engine for the trading card. Yeah. Missed opportunity. He also missed out on E10. Um, yeah, Ome was just too far. Yeah. Um, he did, however, manage to get a lot of stuff that people were requesting, including, like, two books and a figure for me. By, pe um, by people, you mean you. No, he... No, the, the link dump had quite a, quite a few requests in it. Yeah. As well yeah. as the... I created a second chat where it was just me sending, like, stuff that isn't train-related, and, like, some of yeah. it was train-related, because I can accept the group chats. If... If TJ... If TJ and I had the money, he he would have come home with two SR and RL6s, I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> he would have come home with two of them, or he would have been lynched, uh... Lynched by the two foot caucus. Yeah, so this yeah, was just a this was a a visit for everybody else in spirit. Yeah. East, uh, East doing the horseman trip to Japan for everybody else. Yeah, it's a one man trip. 
Yeah. I don't see an issue with it. Gotta make it a two man called, trip. It's called time. efficiency. It, yeah. You know, we just. No more horseman trips. We just send one person to every location the horsemen want to go, and then they send pictures back, and then you don't need to do any more horseman trips. Actually, that's. Solved it. That makes even more sense considering, like. You just do the Union Pacific thing. You have the other people stay, like, sort of nearby on standby. Uh, and by nearby, I mean in their homes. Uh, and then if uh, if they're needed, they can just go over there. Yeah, We'll yeah. get to that in a bit. Yeah, we will. So, anyway. Uh, but, East, I am sad that we don't actually have three hours to go over all of this. Because I know that you had... <laughs> A hell of a time. Uh, I unfortunately was not like in the loop on most of what you were doing, which is why I am yeah so confused by most of what I am seeing. But for like for like three weeks, East was encrypted. It's like, wh <laughs> when is he gonna show up? Who knows? Also, uh, being you know sleeping when I'm awake, etc. Was yeah. That that uh, made my sleep different. schedule got messed up in this whole period. Yeah, we know. Oh, I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. There we go. Uh, but yeah, thank you for sharing your your adventure. Maybe next time, uh, maybe next time we won't let you go alone. But maybe next time also. I don't know. We won't let you spend as much money. No, that, no, doesn't, that doesn't sound I right. Think... I think what will happen is he spends more money because everyone around him is also spending money. I, I feel like uh, <laughs> I, I feel like what would happen is someone would bully him into buying one of the number plates. Me. Yeah. And then somebody would bully the other one into getting a whistle. Why and is it would a, just go yeah. up down? Why there. is my suitcase seventy five pounds overweight? That's <laughs> what, interesting. What happens? There's. People keep bullying each other to buy parts until we have enough parts to assemble a steam locomotive ourselves. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, the Toyo Museum was really good for that. Yeah, I know. I'm surprised we don't have a picture of the wall the of parts. Uh, I can get yeah. that really quick. Let's just uh, steal all of them and assemble a steam locomotive. How hard could it be? One piece at a time, but it's in Japanese. The one piece is real! <laughs> okay, Em, which piece is the one piece? <laughs> the one on the left. Um, yeah, the I've one piece. Left. Yes. The the one piece is the tender decking because we all know that's the most important part. That is accurate. All right, and with that bombshell, uh, it's time for. Look. <laughs> Who did that? That was pretty close. That was that was, that was a reasonable attempt. Okay. Was that Easter Tyler? That was Tyler. That was me. My God. East so... is East is still depressed that the podcast is less than four hours. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to put 701 up against something. It does not have to be TH and B15. That's just the first thing. That's, that's just the first thing that came to mind. 701 is, oh, okay. It's this Ontario thing with the big elephant. Yeah, ears. it's the, it's the Temescoming in Northern Ontario Pacific. Yes. The, the, the silly man, the goofy, the goofy boy. Are these the? This is the railroad that put elephant ears on everything, right? Oh yeah, this is the railroad that put elephant ears on everything, including streamlined Pacifics. This looks like a relatively small, uh, Pacific. Yes, that that's that's why I was like, uh, fifteen. That's a that seems like a relatively decent sized Pacific to put this thing up against. Though I am, you know, if someone wants to swap it out for a different uh, light Pacific, I'm that's fine. I know nothing about. Like, yeah, 15. I don't know anything about this. Maybe. <laughs> uh, like, I mean, but unfortunately, I don't know anything about most light Pacifics, unless someone. How about, wants like, one, how, how about like 148? I was about to say, yeah. unless somebody wants to come in with 148. Uh, uh, East is muted, so East will sure. be just back in in just a moment. All right, so we should probably start before that, then, so we don't have 148. Oh my I said. god. <laughs> I mean. Does one of you want TH and B15? I don't know. I'm looking at it and going, I don't know what I would do with this locomotive, but also I don't know another, like, reasonably sized Pacific. I don't know. I, the I, have, I, have, I have an idea. I have an idea, yeah, but I don't uh -oh. know how... Okay, let's hear it then. Okay, bet. Um, 
the CNO F15s. Let me find a picture. I was gonna say, Jader, why don't you take this boyo? What is this boyo? Twelve ninety three. We forgot to figure this out. Before we yeah, started. yeah, yeah. I forgot about twelve. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. I, I forgot mean, about. I realized 12. we forgot to figure this out before we started, so I was trying to scrounge something together while the discussions was going yeah, okay, on. Bet. Let's, let, yeah, yeah. Seeing okay, this bet. against a G five would be interesting because a G five is like a good baseline, and uh, okay, nothing bet. against one forty eight. But I feel like um, I don't know. No. It's scary. It, it, yeah. Okay. Bet. Yeah. Let's do it. Let me find Canadian this. versus Canadian. Yeah. There you go. Well, I mean, yeah, that's why I settled for the TH and B. Um, TH and Bricks. I always forget TH and B is Canadian. It's Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo. Yeah, I know. I just keep, I forget it's Canadian. For whatever reason, it's just like, yeah, it's just upstate New York somewhere. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. favorite upstate New York town, uh, Toronto. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. You sure it's not Toronto, Washington? Can you get steamed hams there? Uh... <laughs> You can get poutine. What is poutine? Uh oh. I I actually don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to know. I. Yeah. Uh, poutine is just fries topped with gravy and cheese curds. Oh. Well, I just look. I just looked it up. <laughs> yeah, so it's good. it's fries topped with gravy and cheese curds. That uh, looks so good. I just looked up other places named Toronto, and uh. I got an asteroid, so mm -hmm. you know. All right, Galaxy Galaxy Railways, th and bricks. Yeah, Galaxy Railways. It goes to it goes to Toronto. Brackets the asteroid. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, we we have taken way too much time in between sections here. Uh, on top of the extra thirty minutes that we dedicated to the first part. So, um, let's see, okay. seven oh one. Or twelve ninety three, or just G fives in general. But yeah, yeah. Well, twelve ninety three. Uh, I don't really know who's going to be ahead here, but for the sake of who's representing them, I think Jader should go first. Uh. Okay. All right. <coughs> um. That's a. I forgot this is a valid point. Oh, hit like okay. twelve seventy eight. <laughs> And what's your loco base ID? Oh, jeez. Uh, what's my loco base ID? Uh, 14,496. What? Oof. 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 Yeah, it's not a good one. No, it's not. Nope. Mine is 135. That's really good. Yeah. That's oh, we like good... Steve now. That's a good point. Uh... Base Steve. Um, okay. When were you built? Uh, 1921. 1944. Uh oh. I'm sorry? Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, no. 1944. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I mean, uh... I, uh oh. I think they kept building these until, like, I want to say 1949? Okay, yeah, 1292 like was that. built in 1948. So, yeah. Late. I love Canada. Okay. Um hmm. how many how many of you were built? Uh four. One hundred two. Yeah. They sure kept building them. Yeah. I mean I mean it's in the name. Canadian Pacific. You gotta build Pacifics, right? <laughs> uh sure. Sure. Can you convince yeah. them to keep doing that? Please. Um, okay. Might. What's your weight on drivers? Weight on drivers, uh, two hundred fifty-two thousand five hundred. What? Okay. Um. All right. One hundred fifty-one thousand even. All right. Here we go. All, all right. right. This is where the. Wait. No. I'm a clown. Huh? I read the engine weight. One hundred fifty-five oh. even. Oh, I still win, but okay. So they're comparable. Yes, they're comparable. Okay. Cool. Um, what is your engine weight then? Two fifty two five hundred. Two twenty nine five hundred. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Um, tender loaded weight. One fifty six even. Oh crap. 
What's yours? I, go I goofed. 191,000. That's a heavier tender than I would have expected. Interesting. Yeah. So if I called total engine and tender weight. Shader? Sure. Um, 420,500. 408,500. That, the tender makes the difference. Damn it. Yes. All right. Gets a small tender. I don't like this okay. game anymore. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, I'm going to go for the low hanging oh, fruit. A uh, booster tractive effort. Oh, for. I'm going to assume that uh, the G5s do not have a booster. I... Yeah, I assume by the resounding silence that you don't have a booster. Or did Jader die? Jader? Um, what? What happened? I, I was getting I was getting something. Oh. Oh, okay. What, uh, what's this at? Booster tractive effort? Booster I don't have one. Well, yeah. That's a shame. That uh dang, that that sucks. Um Oh, but Okay. It's not live by the stat sheet, die by the stat sheet if it's like visibly different in my picture, right? Um I yeah, I guess. Well, go on. I know what you're doing. Valve gear. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. Well shirt. Uh Built with Young, but rebuilt with Baker, and it's Sporting Baker in the picture I sent. Okay. Built with Young? Yeah, what? Built, okay, why okay. was it built with Young? I don't know. Cursed. Well, I but, understand why it was but, rebuilt with Baker then, anyway. Baker. But yeah, for the for the purposes of this, Baker. Um. Okay. Damn. Oh, because we're so similarly sized, I'm not entirely sure what to call. Everything feels like a gamble. Yeah. That's good though. Um, I prefer that to uh, the alternative. It's currently five to four in favor of the G five. I don't disagree, but at the same, I don't disagree from a competitive standpoint. But as someone who actually has to do this, it's... <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry. Cope. Driver wheelbase. Uh, thirteen feet. Twelve feet. Okay. What? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I don't want to call that, actually. It's a, uh, it's a really small Pacific. Hmm. Engine wheelbase. 33.71 feet. 32.5 feet. It's another Bruh. single foot of difference. Six to five, the Ontario Southern has taken the lead. Uh-oh. Or Southern... Uh, Southern is it Southern or uh, Sutherland? Oh, it's, uh, it's Thomas Northland. Coming in Ontario Northland. Northland. This, is the, this is the Ontario Northland. Uh, I was reading the tender, and somehow I got Southern out of Northland. Yeah. Uh... The... The, uh... Thomas in Northern Ontario was the was basically the Northern Ontario. They renamed uh, the Ontario Northland. They renamed it to Ontario Northland because they kept getting confused with the Texas and New Orleans. <laughs> like they would get they would get like cars or invoices for the Texas and New Orleans, and they were like, "Okay, we gotta we gotta rename our railroad." Um. Okay, overall wheelbase. All wheelbase. Uh -oh. Uh, wait. Ooh, I don't could, have that. This could... What? Oh. <laughs> huh? It, okay. There, there's just nothing there. All right. All right. Well, that's not normal. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I have something for this. Uh, wait, the, the trading card. Yeah. I also have something for this. Wait, yeah. Wait, do I have a G5 card? Hold on. I... Uh... I don't have one any anymore, but I can pull up the... The Hold sort on. of... I do have one. I do have one. <laughs> Let me get it. I'm so glad I'm we so have glad these. We have... I uh, do not. Hold on. Hold on. It's it's in one of these envelopes. I, can... I should have bought more cards. I, I can 
I can, uh... Oh, this is the perfect time to say that there are eight packs of Batch 2 left on our available on our website. You can find the link in the, uh, the cargos. Uh, the overall wheelbase is 65.49 feet for Jader. Damn. <laughs> I... Damn, I, I almost had it. Uh, 69.45 feet? Nice. Nice, yeah. but, uh, but, yep, it's now 6 to 6. In favor of right. G5. Um, okay. In favor of the G5? Well, not in favor of, but it's the balls in the What's G5's your, court, um, and it's tied. Why is the ball in the G5's court? Didn't he just win? I had 60 base. even. I had like 60.27. Oh. I thought you said you had 69 point something. No, I I was reiterating the number for the G5. Oh. I was trying to make sure I heard it right. No, 65.49. Oh, okay. okay. That, that, that explains yeah, why. No. You said something different, so I thought it was your number. Uh, 60.27. No, I was I was reiterating the number because I didn't quite hear you and I wanted to I wanted to make sure I heard it right. Okay, well, in that case, it's 7-5, to five, uh, the Ontario Northland thing is in the lead and calling, okay. which su kind of surprises me because that tender looks a lot longer than the G5s. Mm. Yeah, Okay. Um I'm going to go with I'm going to go with evaporative heating surface. Hold on. Evaporative heating surface. Careful. Uh, 253, wait, no, wrong number. 2576. 2933. Wow. Oh, crap. Uh-oh. That's right. surprising. I'm in danger. Okay. I really okay. thought the 20-year difference in age would matter. Combined heating surface. 30, uh, 3320. Uh, 3627. Where are you putting all these tubes? Doesn't make any sense. So it's, they're, they're under the elf in here, so you just can't see them. Alright. That's fair. Yeah. Interesting. <sighs> High pressure cylinders. High pressure cylinders... 20 by 28. 23 by 28. Goodness. Brad. All right, why okay. is this thing so good? This should not be so good. We should have. I should have let 148 at it. All right. Tractive effort. 34,000 even. 36,493. I don't like this it's game. It's 11 anymore. to 5. Okay. It's 11 to 5. I need four more. I need four more to get the style points. Okay. Yep. Firebox area. Oh. Uh, uh, 199 square feet. 217. Okay. 217. Bruh. Great area. 45.6. 50 even. Oh my god. This is Oof. a good engine. What, why is it a good engine? <laughs> yes! My boy! Bring me home! Okay. Look how they massacred my boy. Okay. Okay. Could it be? It's gonna be... Pick something. It's gonna be... Do, 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 do. Tubes. 
tubes. Tubes. Tubes. Do I have tubes? Uh, okay. Uh, 111, and they're two and a quarter inches in diameter. 162 and a quarter. Wow. So you probably just have a That makes boiler. sense, considering the different sin of apparatus feeding surface, but even yeah. still. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh... Let me check the scores real the score quick. Score is sixteen to five. You are over the uh, threshold, so I can take it to style you points. Can okay, if you would like, I'm gonna take we do it have to. to... <laughs> I'm gonna take it to style points. Okay, Tyler, we've got to salvage this somehow. Uh, oh, I don't know where the heck East went, but oh. we've got to oh. we've got to call something. I don't know. Um... It's 20 years newer, so boiler pressure? Uh, okay, yeah. boiler pressure. 250. Yeah. 200. I was avoiding Yay. it for a reason. Okay, okay, okay. If the gap is only 10 points. <laughs> Tyler? Mm. I have a feeling about something. Feeling? Yeah. I'm hooked on a feeling. Uka uh, 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 I, I'm I'm high on believing a uh, driver diameter. Was that called already? No. Um, no. No, we didn't do that. Okay. Driver diameter. Seventy. Sixty-nine. Nice. Nice. Nice, but no cigar. All yeah, right. That was another one. I was like, I'm not touching it. <laughs> was number belt called? Yeah, East is back. Yep. Uh, the timing. number built uh, was called, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah we called that. Class. I don't think numbering class was called. Do that one. You okay. rat bastard. <laughs> sure, it's numbering class. Four. This is... I, 102. There you go. See, I don't... I like it, but it's just, it's just such a, a gimme. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Although uh, I sometimes I try to shake that up with the trading cards if I can. Um, give me, give me, give me. All right. Well, uh, style points. Uh, elephant ears. D yeah. Fair. Okay. Um, three of these operated at Steamtown. At some point. Well, twelve. I'm using the photo for twelve seventy eight, and uh, I will say that that one definitely did operate. Uh, yeah. It operated right up until the end of its life. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the one that blew up? Yes. Yes. Uh, can I get a style point for uh, the last, like, last steam locomotive on the Ontario Northland? Yeah. Like, that's right. The last well, steam yeah. serve. Like, that's what the picture is. Yeah. On the front, you can see farewell to steam, victim of progress. Victim so, of style progress. point for victim of progress. No. I mean, as in, like, the last train. Okay, point. yeah, that I was, was gonna say, I'm not giving point. you an additional point for a sign yeah, that says no, victim. No, I'm not, I'm not claiming that as an additional point. The uh, Ontario Northland 701 is currently sitting outside of a Dunkin' Donuts with a sign that says victim of progress. It, it does survive. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it, it is currently plinthed in, I don't remember what town, uh... Is currently plinthed somewhere in northern Ontario. Uh, Englehart. It's plinthed in Englehart North in northern Ontario. Gotcha. Um, all right. Any more style points uh, from either contestant? Uh, uh, I have the the cool lit number board on the front. I also have lit number boards. Yep. Uh, 701 was streamlined. There's not a picture of it streamlined, but there's a picture of its sister 700 streamlined. Well, we're going to go by this picture right now, so unless it's getting... Unless it was streamlined at the... Oh, it was. I was about to say, unless it was streamlined at the same time it has elephant ears. It, it did. Don't like that. That's <laughs> terrible. Put... This is yeah. awful. I love it so much. Great. 
Uh, Can we take points away for this? I'm, I'm not. I'm just gonna go in the condition of the 701 photo and pretend I never saw this picture of 700, uh, because it's made my day actively worse. <laughs> you, you know what it reminds me of, though. The, what? Um, I don't know what class, but like like the the big C and Northerns they had that were uh, streamlined, kind of like that. Yeah. The, yeah. The I think it was like U2G. Not U2G, no. no it was like uh, U4As, U4, U4, U4Bs. Yeah. Some, some like that, yeah. yeah. I was confused. like they the took a fridge Rana. and they just yeah. extended the fridge. Yeah. So, somebody photoshopped like a Kenmore logo. Enter the refrigerator, yeah. Anyway, if we're going with I the... Love if you're going with the picture I sent... Yes. Uh, uh, cast pilot. You do have a cast pilot. Um... Okay. Oh, I have. I'm refraining from just like shoveling style points at the G5, or at least things. That I, I have think... a hat. You do yeah. have a hat. <laughs> that I think is potentially a product of you being 20 years newer. Correct. <laughs> One of multiple things, as a matter of fact. Uh, let me All find like enough, a not a cast or pilot. something. See, where where the hell is Age of Steam when I need it? If Hang if on. we're it's going by. If we're going by the photos used, can I get paint points? Because I have more interesting paint. You do. You definitely do. Let me get let me get a picture of it. Let me get a picture of it. It, it looks basically the same as preserved. Uh, so it is a good point of comparison. Let me get a picture of it as preserved. Because that is not all weather caps. There are, there are three things I'm looking at on the G5 that I just want to blurt out. And I am holding them back because also at the end of the day, it's you're still ten points behind. Well, wh what are they? Uh, well, there's a there's a thing on the side of your your thing, and there's another thing on the side of that thing, uh, and there's also a thing on the side of uh, your other thing. Do you have any idea how little it knows it down? <laughs> Do you have I'm, I'm looking at the, the audience and the audience see my cursor. I'm looking at a thing here. I'm looking at a thing here, and I'm looking at a thing right here. Does not help. Uh, no, it, it does not help. I'm sorry. Um, can I can I can I save your shenanigans? Um. Ooh. Wait. I have a head and throttle. Yes. There's one yes. of the things. Hooray! Uh, let's see. Apparently, the lead truck has. I, I'm just reading the Age of Steam thing <laughs> at this point. Um, the four wheel lead truck has roller bearings. That, while well, I don't have confirmation, I feel like that's something that the the TNNO thing does not have. Considering the uh, I don't have anything saying for or against. So. Yeah. Um, 1293 was in a movie, Terror Train, apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, media appearance, that's a point. Okay, but... Do you what have... number did... What... Did Jader say 1293? Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Imagine. If we're going with 1278, then no. Right, and I'm going by oh. the, the Explodey Boy here. Oh, uh, okay, hold on, let me pull up 1278's page. Because that's the last photo that you sent... Oh, can we okay. can we give twelve seventy eight points then for the writing of the modern the boiler? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't style feel like that's point. A style <laughs> point. <laughs> style point. You are a bad example. Yeah, I I you know somehow I feel like that's not a style point. Um, <laughs> a highly influential locomotive in the modern landscape. Certainly has had more effect on steam locomotive operations than uh, 701 has had. Can, okay, well, hold on. Can this be a style point? When it went to, uh, here, I'll send the picture. Hold on. 1278 Maybe. media appearance in many FRA documents. This is true. <laughs> uh, damn it. Hold on. The picture's on Age of Steam's website. Can I find it on Google so I can actually send it? Can you, like, right-click and copy it? Mm, apparently not. It's in, like, a slideshow thing. Oh. Um, okay. 
It had well when it went to Steamtown, it got an Alaska feed water heater. Well, you already got points for your feed water heater. Damn. For your hat. But I have a fancy. But I have two fancy hats. Okay. <laughs> I'm a man who wears um, many hats. All right. Well, I'll give you a little bit more time to see if you can figure something else out. Otherwise, you're gonna have to call this competition I mean, here. And uh, I mean, power reverse. You do have power wash. reverse. I'm not does sure if the uh, the Ontario North I, thing does. I can't see if it has power reverse or like I can't see a bar coming out of the cab, but I can't see a power reverse because if it's there, I think it's underneath the like side skirt thing. Mm. That one I'm not going to gamble on because power reverse is not that that new of a technology. Have the cool inset tender ladder. Thing. Yes, there was the third thing I was looking at. The tender ladder, which someone got in, what, last last episode, somebody pointed that out. So, well, anything else? Because I can't think of anything else. I, I can oh, see I a few things. Oh, yeah? Okay, go, yeah, better, go, Tyler. Better tender trucks. Ah, uh, yeah, see, that's something that we wouldn't have known. Why, what's with these tender trucks? Uh, it's, what it does is most center trucks, you've got the spring rigging is based around, um, you've got like the center section, mm -hmm. right? Whereas how this is set up is that you've got a crossbar that's going between each of the axles, the axle boxes. So it, it crosses against itself before going into putting pressure onto the center. I see. Uh, let's see here. What else have we got? Wait, I see something. Uh oh, go I on. I have the smoke box door hinges. Oh, do you? Yeah. Hold on, I need I need the, some different. I need a different. I need to pull look up at the, the other photos. Look at the preserved photos. Look at the preserved photo I sent. Yes, the big hinges. <laughs> I don't when know was, why I love those so much. When was Seven Hundred One retired? Uh, it 57. says that on the side of the engine. Yeah, it says it on the. Nineteen sixty-four, seventy-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. It's a uh, fifteen to twenty-one. Thank you, Tyler. And uh, I think we should wrap this segment up. I have pull it, it has top feeds as well. I will throw this out. What I'm is that? Not sure about the where the check valves are. Oh, the snifters and the terminal checks. No, not the terminal <laughs> checks. The the check valves for the injectors, where they actually feed into the boiler. Oh, okay. If you have them a, a side I'll check, then on. you tend to build up. Why is Shit, the text just? Oh, I see what happened. The text is suddenly white. I'm trying to write uh, the thing out in the cargo's document for the end of this, and I'm wondering why I cannot type because the text is white. All right. Well, uh, I'll call that then sixteen against twenty-one for the. TNNO or the Ontario Northland 701 by the points 16 to 21 and I don't know who the heck I'm going to vote for because uh, yeah I, I guess I'm going to vote for 701 I it's such a oh. weird thing as long as I don't think about it with the streamlining on I'm much I, I like it more oh i just noticed i have a re-railing frog on the tender i think you do although so does so does 1278 yeah uh, i'm not calling it out as a point i'm just saying oh neat taking notes on that one yeah there it is yeah um so yeah i'm gonna vote for 701 against my better judgment I, tyler I love... east 701 I right, love vote the... for the thing I've seen, which is 1278. Okay, well, I, at least 1278 gets a pity point. I love the Temescalming in Northern Ontario. They, they, put, they put elephant tears on a consolidation. It's so good. Didn't they put it on something it's even smaller than that? not good. I don't... I, they might have. I, I don't know. I might be thinking but... of the the meme of the... Uh, oh, yeah. The, so. the mogul. That one's in Alberta. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. All right. 
Oh, unfortunate. Nope. Yeah. They also had they also had northerns with the goofiest air horn placement. Goofy air horn placement. Wait, where? <laughs> found it yes yeah <laughs> it's just peeking out from under the, the headlight okay um something something my own hubris i don't know you're in your arrogance i feel bad for east okay yeah food not not right. just yeah. for like food in general but because we had to curtail his japan segment and he was clearly having a lot of fun with that yeah, um, I, I, I wish you could have gotten, I wish you could have gotten like a full two hours to just talk about Japan. But can we get episode two two twelve point five? Yeah, yeah. Just... it's the the East Japan the East in Japan episode. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Also, he has like seventeen articles for Brightline, and I don't know what we're gonna do with them. Uh, so instead, uh, let's we, um did, let's talk about twenty eight sixteen because we were just been talking about Canadian Steep. Yes, 2816. Hold on a hot second. But yeah, 2016, 2016 for those who don't know. That's the uh, Hudson that Canadian Pacific City now owns. And it's been in and out of mainline service for the past I, 20 years, I guess. I really don't know. Yeah, the, they, they ran it in the 2010s for... They ran it in like the 2010s for that IMAX film... What was it? The Rocky Mountaineer? Was that what it was called? Rocky Mountain and, Express. Rocky Mountain Express. And then it's basically been sitting dormant in Calgary ever since. Except yeah. for it, they steamed it up and pulled it out to film a promotional video during COVID in 2021 when they were mm -hmm. running the holiday train. Yeah. Um, but now it's been, well, it's been talked about for a while that, yeah, they want to do like a, with CPKC, they want to do like a you know, a full cross system uh, run with it. And now they actually announced when they're going to do it. On April 14th, 2024, marks the first anniversary of CPKC existing. Hmm. They're going to run it. They're going to run 2816 from Calgary all the way to Mexico. I want to say Mexico City. Yep. Yeah, Mexico City. I actually, I have the map pulled up on stream for people to see. And uh, so. This, um, them, you know, restoring it and running on the main line is, uh, very cool. However, this map is where the beef begins. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's stop at a moose jaw nowhere else in Canada. Fuck you. This is a, a map that is 100% focused on, uh, what would be, what would be the most convenient locations for us to stop this train? Uh, and not... Yeah. Can, you, can you send a picture of the map? Uh, it's the second, it second article. Through. Scroll down. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, this map makes me uh, mad. <laughs> this map, mad. this map makes me cope and seethe. Honestly, I don't know why they're not sending it all the way to Maine. Uh, they should definitely do it. Yeah, run I. It to, run it. What is this? What is this connection they have here? Is that Brunswick? What is this map? Uh, it's a map of the CPKC system with a big yellow line for where they're going to send the steam engine. Now your gobbles. So they just so they just grabbed a highlighter. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and they decided we're going to stop okay. it in Calgary. We're going to stop it in Moose Jaw, and we're going to stop it nowhere else in Canada. They're also like completely back bypassing Oklahoma. They're also completely bypassing Oklahoma and Arkansas. They're only stopping it in Laredo, Texas. Yep. And then they're just booking it to Mexico City. We're running the Mexico. They're not Yeah. You know, again, it is a it is a straight line with no deviations. I mean like the only not shortcut is to go to Bensonville, Chicago. Uh yeah. The only not shortcut the only point where they're going out of their way to hit up a big area is when they're going to Chicago. Oh, that uh that connection into Maine the one that comes down is Searsport, Maine. Uh, and then it goes out to St. John on Trichotrites, which, uh, yeah, they should do that next. 
Actually, absolutely. They should come what up from Mexico do... and they should run it to yeah. Maine. They should bring it across. They should bring it across Ontario, stop it in Toronto, take it to Maine, then run it all the way to Vancouver. You have the locomotive. You put in the effort to overhaul the locomotive. Take it places, you rat bastards. I love yeah, that how. It seems possible they wouldn't take it to, like, what, the most populous area in Canada. Yeah. Consider the following, though. Take it to the WWNF. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I mean, don't they, on... they own that bit? You know what? That's funny. That's missing from this map. Uh, you know, because they own the little Rockland section. Uh, I think they just lease it out because it's... The uh, Wiscasset? Yeah, it's an isolated piece of rail between yeah. Brunswick and Rockland. They ended, it, they ended up getting it in the deal when they bought the CM&Q. Um, because that was a CM&Q property. Uh but it's not connected to anyone else's railroads except for stuff that's owned by the state of Maine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. In Brunswick. So, you know, it's just an isolated stretch, which is why it's been, like, leased out to other companies all the time. It's why they have that little RDC company that wants to run passenger service on it. Uh, but definitely they should take uh, 2816 there instead. So that run, it, can... uh, yes. run it run it, to Wiscasset Gobbles and yes. then put it on a truck and bring it to the WWNF. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, no. Give it would the be way easier to, WWF, to extend the line down to Wiscasset. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Give them the money to extend the line down to Wiscasset. It probably would be cheaper than renting a truck. It, just as a yes. show of good faith. Yeah, yeah. The show of good faith. Canadian Pacific should build, should rebuild the Wiscas, uh, the Wiscasset Waterville in Farmington Every from year. Wiscasset to Head Tide. Like, just give them the money to build the rest from to Wiscasset and also to Head Tide. And, I'll and be also to water here in Farmington. Yeah, and I'll be <laughs> give uh, them the money to run to Farmington. All the uh, all the class ones should have a competition Farmington. to see who can donate the most money to the Wisconsin Water Hill in Farmington. Also, yeah. I love that, and I don't want to put on this segue too early because it could be a really nice jump. But I love that we are ranting about <laughs> CPKC not using their steam locomotive enough. Um, and not planning to use their steam locomotive enough compared to mm -hmm. the opinions on Union Pacific funneling money into its uh, steam program. It's uh, it's like the alternative is, you know, the big boy's very cool, but why the hell are you guys wasting your, you know, you're focusing on your steam program and PR when you should be focusing on making your employees not hate their lives. Uh, yeah. it, it just goes yeah. to show how different the opinion is of CPKC versus Union Pacific. Not that it's undeserved, yeah. but mm -hmm. yeah, I yeah. Though this this article wasn't touched on, CP is also CP is also not outstanding about labor. This isn't an article that someone grabbed, but CP was found to, to be in contempt of court. Oh yeah, for violating for overworking their crews. Hold yeah, on, where is that? I need to grab that article. There Hold it is. Hold on, I got it. Contempt got it. of court. Well, I just need to put it in the uh, cargos. Yeah. No, absolutely. To be fair, yeah. on this, the point of CPKC not using 2860 enough, uh, the Big Boy's only been run, what, one time this year? And it ran, like, one time last year? Yeah, but I'm saying nobody's so. complaining about, you know, nobody's saying, uh, well, maybe people are saying they're not using the Big Boy enough, but it seems yeah. a little bit more justified. Like, the, the conversation yeah. is completely different, you know? Yeah. So, but speaking of Union Pacific... Oh, yeah. Okay. We I, have some good news, it. and we have some bad news. Good news. Uh, two things. One, uh, they've been patting themselves on the back so much about being rewards for uh, Disability Equality Index, uh, Leadership Awards, Minority, uh, what else? All I'm getting best, out of this is Union Pacific best place says... For Union Pacific is a great place to work. Yeah. Uh, the thing I would like to point out, the last thing that we had from them on the awards, uh, 2023 best place to work for women and diverse managers. Great. Notice managers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you Managerial. Just, yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're doing yeah. great here, folks. We're doing great plenty, here. It's great of... to be working in the big offices in Omaha. Yeah. Plenty of women in the managerial positions, and they love it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I too like sitting in an office all the time. You know what I wouldn't like sitting in? A truck about three hours from the trade I'm supposed to be on. Yeah. 
So Well no, you're not supposed to be on the train. That's why you're sitting in the truck. <laughs> yeah. There's 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 good news and bad news on this front. We're gonna start with the good news when it comes to the people on the ground, not in the office. Uh the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen, this is from June thirtieth, they ratified a scheduling agreement with Union Pacific. Which means that they will actually have some sort of schedule in their lives. It's not going to be completely on call. Uh huh. They will have engineers are going to be available for 11 days and then they will have four days off. So it's almost, it, this is like what it should be, you would think. I mean, that still sounds like it sucks, but I guess it's better. Yeah. You know, it's not great. But, again, it was 24-7, 365 out of, unless you got to those, you know, you worked so many hours and then you're out for a day and or two. And you have died. Yeah. You've died on the law. You've died. So this, no, you no, I meant in some... real life. <laughs> you know, no. when you die in Union Pacific, you die in real life. Yes. <laughs> so, this is, this is good to hear. Um. Then UP immediately does two things. Well, okay, one of the things they've been doing for a while, but the other one, this the big one, you need to learn uh, you don't put a person on a truck and have them 50 miles away from the train and say, that's fine, that's good, you know? Yeah, if you get a hot box, just sit in the cab for two hours and I'm sure a conductor will be along sometime. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a railroad employee in a truck within 50 miles of the consist that caused lack McGinty. But you know, we're not gonna talk <laughs> about that. Yeah, talk I, mean, about that. <laughs> I mean not to <laughs> not to miles, not man. to undermine the metaphor, but I think the problem was that there was not even one person at the Lack Lack McGinty consist. Uh, I feel yeah, like if there I... had been one person there it would have been substantially better than the zero people that were there. Okay, yeah, there were I, the, there was I... a lot of people there for a while because the firefighting force was um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, there was there were plenty of people there. It's just the problem is none of them knew how train work. Yeah, so the yeah. I I guess that what we should be doing then is just teaching firefighters to tie down trains that are on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the Definitely. that'll fix it. That'll yeah. fix it. Then we can have one man I, I, <laughs> If every so, if every volunteer firefighter is technically an employee of Union Pacific. Yeah, this will work out great. Go wrong. I just want to throw this out there about the. I know we rail on how bad of an idea the conductors in cars is, but fifty miles seems like a really, really generous number. Uh, yeah, like I was thinking more like two hundred miles. Yeah, yeah. depending on. I was, so I was thinking like, oh, it's a hundred miles of like area like length so, of track do so you put the truck in the direct middle and you have 50 miles but i was you drive yeah, I was gonna you say, have more time i was gonna say does this mean that like there's gonna just be a guy every hundred miles like sitting yeah. in a town next to the track every hundred miles in a truck let me see if they like, actually list a range uh, they a... do not actually put a distance hemlock once again Good that's very job. generous to assume that there is a town every 100 miles along this track yeah yeah. Okay, so, so, so I have a que so I kind of have a question. Go on. Then, so, if you have, you know, you have your engineer running the thing, and then, is the conductor like assigned to the train, and they just kind of follow it, or is it like, okay, you're assigned between here and here? Uh, it would I be mean, between here and here. Yeah, we don't know exactly, but it's definitely not the, the first one, and possibly the second one. Like, yeah. it's the idea is to reduce the number of people they have to employ or well to reduce the number of people they have to pay anyway uh so you know therefore you have one quote-unquote conductor who's responsible for multiple trains um it just mm -hmm. i mean i guess reject yeah. modernity embrace like uh, section houses is is what we're doing eventually uh no we should Reject but section house for MOW. Not reject anymore. Modernity. Me reject modernity. Put a caboose on it. Make the crews like five dudes. Yeah. Okay. Bring back steam. Like Job. statistically, Job. it wouldn't cost that much more. Actually. <laughs> no, reject to... modernity. Reject modernity. Return to electric. 
They, they, uh, they, okay, yeah. they, they have the big boy. They lease out 2816 when they're done running to Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, what's the, what's the, like, uh, what, the locomotive was mentioned, right? Was that mentioned already? Which, which, which locomotive? The, there was an article in here about, like, UP making a commemorative locomotive for their workforce, and it's gone now. I, I think that was a while ago. I don't know. No, which, I don't know. No, which, well, I mean, they've no, made a couple no, of them. I know one... what you're on about, but it, it, was like, it was like a recent one, yeah. Yeah, there was a recent I... one, and I brought it up because I was going to say, didn't they do this in 2021? They did the one locomotive, and then he promptly stopped talking about it. Like, oh, wait, we made fun this? of it, stopped talking about it, and then apparently they did it again. Nope, I found, a, <laughs> I found an article where they're once again patting themselves on the back for being such a cool and great place to work. I don't... Yeah, there I, was... Tyler had one under his news thing, I swear to God. Ooh, I, I don't I know about that. I think you're I getting a Mandela effect. Uh, no, there was. Yeah. And they, and Hold he, on. Um, I, um, I might have found it. I don't know if it's just the right thing. Yeah, hang on. No, here it is. I have the tweet open still. <laughs> Found it. Celebrates employee-focused programs with new locomotives. I what think. is this? Yeah, what is this? Is my yeah, exactly. What? This looks almost I... as dumb as my hat with the pins on it. This was yeah, this yes. was under yeah. Tyler's thing. I swear to God, and then it disappeared. And I, I like, don't. I don't believe you, but. It was. You can go. You you nope. have the you have the edits to the doc. You can go check. I, I I don't think there was anything else there. No, there was. Where did I get the tweet? Where did I get the link to the tweet then, Ellis? I don't I don't know, but I don't think it was there. It was. You're gaslighting me. I I don't know. I feel pretty gaslit myself, if I'm honest. I think uh, okay, I think so... I'm the victim here. So we have. Pinmobile here at the same time that they are pushing <laughs> to, <laughs> to to testing later in the summer on trains and sections of Nebraska and Colorado. Which doesn't Colorado it, well, they say will you use... need two man crews? Isn't that like a, yeah. a law there or something? Yeah, as it as it goes on, the road will continue using two crew members on its trains during the test, but officials say this could bolster their case in future negotiations for cutting crew size if it is successful okay yeah. so so they have the so, second dude in they have the conductor also on the train and i guess he's just going to be sitting there just like vibing while they wait to see yeah, he's going to be paid to do fa during this time <laughs> well you, uh, you have to he, he's paid you, to feed the monkey driving the train in fairness yeah in, in fairness um i mean that the railroad seems to think that's all he does anyway yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, the engineer so, can't take his hands off the controls or, you know, eyes off the, the you know, rails or whatever. He's got to, you know, he just has to get, someone, you know, the, the conductor has to do the, the good old here comes the airplane with yeah, his sandwich. Someone has, yeah. to up, someone has to hold up the bottle so he can piss. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> on, on the point of regulation side, though, because you mentioned Colorado, um... Again, the unions have rules against this currently in the, their agreements, which is why it had to be shelved earlier. Because if, if this sounds familiar, uh, they were threatening to do this at like the beginning of the year, before they did the union contracts. Um, before Joe so, Brandon saved officials... everyone by stopping the railroad strike. Yeah, Joe, Joe yeah. Brandon made everything better. There's yeah. nothing wrong with railroads now. Joe Brandon yeah, stopped it. On the bright side, they there's do have nothing wrong. Now. The unions got exactly what they wanted. Definitely don't question all the things that got dropped from the... Yeah, um, yeah, it's fine. Joe Brandon, anyhow, most union president. Can I sign up to be the dude in the car? <laughs> How much, uh, like... No, 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 no. The dude, you want to be the conductor in the engine. No, I want to be the conductor in the car, and then I'll just never show up to where I'm supposed to be, which will make it look like a bad idea and convince Union Pacific to not do it, right? Yeah. You get this, this to sabotage true. it from the inside. Exactly. Uh, I, the union parody redacted scam. in Minecraft. Uh, I'm, not, yeah, I'm yeah. not doing this Definitely. in real life. Um, yeah. Legal advice is that you shouldn't do this, wink, wink. The, I mean, the legal mm -hmm. advice is that you should not mess with railroads because they basically own, like, 
the lawmakers. Uh, you know, Colorado has this rule that you need two man crews or whatever. But I guarantee you that if Union Pacific wanted to put one man crews on, they would just do it, and Colorado would say, "Don't do that," and Union Pacific would say, "Okay," but then keep doing it. Wait, mm-hmm. is speaking of unions? Is the article for that? Uh union guy who got fired in retaliation in here because i thought that was a up guy uh i i, I don't know is it where, where did it go? fired in retaliation uh, um but oh what I was, the, I was the, gonna... the the yeah the the, the whistleblower guy who was fired in one. retaliation yeah the yeah. whistleblower one that is a up guy so ah uh, up doing great things yeah so they also yeah. fired a union member seemingly in retaliation for whistleblowing on the state of the industry to press. <laughs> so, well, you know, UP, it's such a good place to work, guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, definitely. You've got seven sick days now. De- yeah. Per year. Yay. Yeah. God. Definitely. Also, um, yeah. If you, if you are an individual, uh, like, like everyone definitely didn't know about the state of the industry beforehand so firing the whistleblower that'll really keep things under wraps right yeah yeah Yeah. what you definitely are going to do is make the whistleblower not want to (laughs) talk yeah also for the record the link is in there the link for that terrible up employee locomotive is in there it's third link under up awards oh okay is it seriously under UP Awards? Yeah, yeah, that's why I was like, where is oh, it? Because what's... it feels like a weird place to put it. Oh, see, that section got renamed multiple times as we sort of yeah. gained articles. Mm-hmm. Uh, originally, oh. it was just like yeah. UP, DEI, and then I got the second one, and then I got the third one, and then I got the fourth and fifth ones and went, oh, this is all like award stuff. I mean, I guess uh, pinning all those badges to that locomotive is a sort of award. Yeah, they're they're patting themselves on the back for being so good to their employees. Don't look at the one they Where's... fired for talking about how bad it is in the industry. Don't look at that yeah. one. We're treating the rest really good. We where's promise. the Where's the field marshal Zukov gif with the the chest studded with medals? That's Union Pacific right now. Yeah, yeah. I will say though, uh, so smart, the the union has not changed their position on keeping two man crews. What? Uh, no, no way. They they want to keep two-man crews still? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so Kansas is currently, they have a law going through that will require two-man crews. There are nine other states currently that require two-man crews. California, Wisconsin, Arizona, West Virginia, Minnesota, Washington, Nevada, Colorado, and Ohio. <laughs> Wait, is Ohio really? the only one of those that doesn't have UP in it? Or wait, no, they're not I, in... I didn't know Ohio actually had something that was good. I, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. Damn. yeah. Uh, well, uh, UP doesn't go to West Virginia either. Oh, okay. I didn't hear West Virginia yeah. in that. Uh, yeah. So... Yeah. But, you know, the, it'll... I don't know, maybe... Maybe even if the unions can't hold off the railroads, uh, apparently the states might be able yeah. to. We'll uh, see. I mean... Ellis Jader, you were there. Did you see any Union Pacific in West Virginia? Um, <laughs> no, but we did see uh, we did no. see a special CSX unit. We talked that about that last time. So once again, yeah. uh, uh, the eastern equivalent of Union Pacific just patting itself on its back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although I wish I wish they were the eastern equivalent of Union Pacific because then we'd probably have a cool big steam engine running around a bunch. They they would steal thirteen oh nine and run that. That would be really funny. And I honestly, yeah, you know. To think about 1309 for just a minute, isn't it great that we haven't heard anything terrible out of 1309 in quite a while? Yeah, they and got it nice. running yeah. finally and people stopped making fun of them. <laughs> yeah. Actually, they didn't blow it up and people were like, okay, well, I guess there's nothing to make fun of anymore. Yeah, it's it's boring. Why can't they, like, wreck it or something? Just uh, drop it into a river. Come on. But thankfully... The every, one thing I will say no is... They haven't gotten it on the turntable yet, I don't think. Well, they can't get it. I mean, you know, whatever. They'll figure it out. There's yeah. a Lionel 13 and 9 getting made. Oh, That's gross. concerning. How much is it? Oh, like, how many thousands oh, of dollars? Let me... Is it $1309? <laughs> That'd be so good. Hold on, let me check. Lionel.com slash products. That's Western Maryland Legacy 2662. Okay. 
Uh, While you're doing that. Oh no, it's more uh, than 1309, I'll tell you that much. God. Oh boy. Oh, this is probably like 4,000. It is under two. It is 1799.99. Oh. God. You could probably buy a cab, cab ride in the real one for that. Yeah, but not in, yeah. the, not in the big boy, that's for sure. Not in the big boy, that's oh, true. 1309 uh, is getting taken out of service for routine maintenance but unfortunately it's nothing very exciting oh it's fine they're uh, taking mm -hmm. they're taking the wheels off like 1225 1225 yeah. is supposed to be back by december uh that's what that's they that's what it. they want they want it to be Ma back mason's, by christmas mason's there i trust him where's simon simon is probably, also there he, he, he yeah yeah, yeah i trust them yeah. i've never met simon but i trust them <laughs> You would mm -hmm. like Simon. Simon bought six packs of trading cards as part of paying me back for the trip. Outstanding. <laughs> I, I had a real hell of a time fitting all of those in one envelope to mail. That's that's so good. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay, yeah. I threw the links for 1309 and 1225. If anyone wants to go buy an O scale 1309, yeah. uh, go ahead and go ahead and do that. Yeah. Speaking right. of Spending too much money on something oh, no. off. Oh no! I was gonna say, wait a minute, wait. No, I wanted to, I wanted to let the hemlock rant hour wait for just a minute. Okay. Uh, because I'll put it on. No, I'll no, you you can because I don't know exactly what I'm going to say about the Adirondack. So, All tell right. me about terrible decisions that aren't 1309's restoration. So, so, the state of Michigan, in their infinite wisdom, has given a grant of. Twenty of two hundred thousand dollars to a company to to the Hugvolt Battery Electric Car. It the Office of Future Mobility and Electrification gave Intramotive uh, a two hundred thousand dollar grant for their Tugvolt car. What is the Tugvolt car? You ask. It's a hopper car that they glued a battery pack to. And now it's an autonomous rail car. You know, it can go deliver itself to the customer. It's a groundbreaking milestone in freight mobility, according to wow. interesting engineering. You know, you know it's what strikes me? It's an autonomous, me? You know zero emission rail solution. You know what you know? strikes me as being really great about this what? sort of thing? Is that what strikes you? Things that go in hopper cars, you typically only need, like, one or two cars of yeah. that thing, right? You never yeah, need, you never, like, you know. You you never deliver, like, everything in hopper cars. You only ever deliver, like, one time, right? Right? You know, hopper right. cars are primarily used for massive bulk loads of something like coal or rocks, right? Right? You only deliver one car? You want to send that one autonomous car off, you know? And it's great. If we just send a hundred autonomous cars off, it'll be fine. Right? You know? Yeah, I really... Yeah. I, I think... Yeah. I think... Right. If if these are supposed to run without a locomotive, right? <laughs> Does this mean all of them have an air compressor? Do you have an air compressor on each individual hopper car? Is that how you brakes. break these Sa things? Saves weight. The maintenance. What? Yes. What happens? What happens if this thing is a hot box? What do you do? Like, does someone... What happens if a knuckle separates and... Well, you don't I mean, need to worry about knuckles have... separating. They'll all drive themselves to their destination. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. How do you charge these? How big do the charging ports have to be to charge up your entire... I I have three electronic devices that I need to charge, and some days it's like, well, these <laughs> things have to take turns charging. I only got two charges. Like... Hemlock. How many Hemlock. fucking chargers? Hemlock. No, this one can be. Oh. This one's easy. This one I can answer. You uh -huh. make one rail positive and the other rail negative. This is this is a solved technology. Okay. Uh, so you, yeah. You you just have charging sections wherever the loaders and unloaders are. You just you pull it in there and the rails are hot. Just don't get near them. Uh, you know. Sure. Which is which is great because sure. it's autonomous. So you remote control these cars into the the charging sections. What if you were to put a thing that connects to an overhead wire that powers it, so it charges over sections like that? And then you're over, well, you're over that's a, that's expensive. Yeah, that's a dumb idea. Well, Why would we do that? I, it's just this makes me so mad. This makes <laughs> so me so mad. 
I have a main point I'm building to, and I'll get to it. It's but, such a so bad that's idea. our first that's our first rail innovation looking to solve climate change through, you know, making making trains zero emissions and autonomous. This might the second this might be a nice way to go from one to the next. I just think about when you need to move just one car at a time. Mm-hmm. Obviously hoppers aren't it. Uh yeah. maybe like a box, a box car? car or a flat car maybe well i've got great news for you <laughs> what if you had a box car but it didn't open from the sides and also you could hitch it to a truck and also it was the portland vancouver junction railway uh which is a class three in washington has partnered with the tech startup genesis electronics group uh so the genesis electronics group is now able is they're letting the genesis electronics group uh, use their short line to experiment with their autonomous battery electric road rail vehicle. Or, tr- or basically, it is like a pickup truck, but it's electric, it's autonomous, and you cut the cab off, so it is just leveled at the base of the bed, and then you can connect in a, quote, unmodified truck trailer to it, and put it on train wheels, and then the truck, the the battery powered, like flattened truck, also has train wheels that descend down under it like a high rail, and then you can just run the truck and trailer on the track. Hold you on, know? hold on, hold on. There was. Let me just Google.com. Okay, Google.com. <laughs> Road railer. Hmm. Yeah, it's what a is... new innovation to have unmodified <laughs> truck trailers that could go on rails. No one's ever thought of this. Road Railer. Road but you see, we built put a battery by the on it. corporations in the early 1980s. Uh, this was yeah. a modern, up-to-date version of Chesapeake and Ohio's railways. Road Railers introduced in 1950. You know what? Yeah, yeah. This is a brand yeah. new technology. Uh, this is really going to... This is something that's definitely going to take off. I mean, it's never been tried yeah, before, yeah. but I bet if they had tried it in the past, it would have gone really great, and it would still yeah. be around today. So Because, uh, because clearly, clearly the way... Trains, trains are great. They're so efficient. The steel wheels on steel rails are so efficient. And a lot of these tech startups acknowledge that. So clearly, what we need to do to make rails more efficient is take these long strings of cargo all heading in the same direction and make all of them atomized. Instead of one locomotive hauling all of this freight, we need, like, all of the freight to be individualized. Either, either you have one truck for each load of, for each car load, one motor for each car load, by a detachable vehicle, or you have one motor for each car load built into the car, and that'll make the trains more Listen, efficient. more right? motors equals more faster. Yeah, more motors means more efficiency and more gooder. And because it's battery powered and because it's battery powered and autonomous, you don't have to pay labor. And it's green, you know? Don't ask about the emissions for producing lithium ion batteries. Or that they tend to catch fire. It's green. It's green, right? If we put a battery in it, it's green. I don't see a problem it's, with things catching fire. I mean, that's, you know, that stuff catches fire. It's fine. It's such a tech bro solution. The re- I think the core of, one of the cores of why this makes me so angry is all of these autonomous rail tech startups. They have identified correctly that rail is much more efficient for moving freight and it's much more environmentally friendly for moving freight because it's much more energy efficient. <laughs> and they... And they want to iterate on that efficiency in a way that can make them money. And they, in a way that can make the money by doing a tech startup. They... And instead of, and the problem is they've identified one of the core efficiencies of railways. And they've decided the other one is the problem. <laughs> yeah, they. Like the two uh... core efficiencies of railways is steel wheels on steel rails. And locomotives hauling long strings. And they've taken steel wheels on steel rails to be the good efficiency and said, well, locomotives on cars, that's the problem. You can't set, you need to atomize it. You need to make it autonomous. It's the fucking Tesla version of efficiency and that it looks like efficiency if you know nothing about the, if you know nothing about the actual subject. It's, you know, this is, these are the same brains that brought us the loop and the hyperloop and said, this will revolutionize transportation. Hang on. All right, so there's, there is one thing that I do want to say about this in a less cynical way, which is 
the thing that's sort of being identified... Yeah, you're right to say that the other thing that makes railroads efficient is sort of what they're trying to make not happen. But the other thing, the thing that makes railroading difficult and inefficient in some respects is terminal switching. And if you can sort of drop off a train in front of an industrial complex and all of those loads just scurry on their own to their destinations without having to sort of lug them around and service the industries one at a time, that would in fact be an improvement uh, over what has to be done right now. And that's why terminal switching is kind of a, you know, it's not a dead art, but there are a lot less uh, railroad railroad served industrial complexes than there are road served industrial complexes because uh, unlike yes. copper cars, most industries do only take like one or two car loads a day, if that. Yeah. Um, but however, you know, th- this 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 kind of technology uh, should never be touted as something that should go anywhere near a main line. Uh, and that's ex- they're just trying to replace all rail cars with something yeah. else they're trying he... to make rail cars trucking they've yeah. they're trying to make railroads trucking they've identified one of the key efficiencies of railroads that being the you know low friction of steel wheels on steel rails and decided the other pro- the problem the thing keeping this inefficient is that you don't have you don't have it acting like trucks you don't have a bunch of autonomous cars going around you don't have a bunch of rail cars going around autonomously you can't make it like semi yeah, the truck well, just they, rolls up to its destination, and it's completely independent from every other semi truck. Yeah, they've they've identified that the lack of granularity in railroading is yeah. is the problem. And I mean, again, not to be, not to be sort of, uh, you know, what's the word? Not holistic about this whole thing, or you know, not to not acknowledge yes. part of it. It that is a problem. It is something that yeah. holds railroads back. This yeah. isn't really a solution to that, at least not in yes. the way that they're presenting yeah. it. And I would argue that if you want to streamline terminal switching, you know, the solution is not strapping a battery pack to every rail car and letting it drive itself. The solution to that is, you know, look into things we were doing back in, like, the 1930s. Think about think about how we used to do urban freight rail versus how we do it today with, like, and ports and things Mm -hmm. you know don't you know it's trying to it's trying to solve a problem it it feels like a solution in search of like it's it's not really solving i don't think it really works as a solution to any of the like actual inefficiency that railroads are facing i think it is just like some Tesla guys reckon if they apply the same principle as, like, the Loop and Tesla trucks to trains, then it'll make the trains better. Yeah, it is just looking at trucking and going, well, that is, this is something that trucks do better than trains. Why don't we make trains do that? It's like, well, that yeah. that yeah. doesn't help. That doesn't work. Yeah, speaking of things that uh, work or, or don't, um, so, Canadian Pacific, Kansas City, and CSX have announced plans to partner up on developing uh, kits to convert diesel electric locomotives to hydrogen locomotives. You know, it's so cool how innovative hydrogen locomotives are. You know, I've never seen a railroad try a hydrogen locomotive before, much less can uh, much less Canadian Pacific, except in the early 2000s when they did do that. <laughs> uh, this this article details uh, talks about the. HH-20B hydrogen locomotives that were created as a pilot program for a hydrogen switcher. You know, back in the 2000s, they were trying to develop this, and Canadian Pacific ordered 24, only had, like, two delivered, and then sold them on to BNSF, like, pretty quickly. They only had them for a couple years. And then the one at BNSF just sort of sat around outside an office its life, and then got donated where it is now gutted and is not actually a working locomotive. So, you know, yeah, right. Few, you know, good, good omens for hydrogen locomotives in the future. I, I will, right. I will once again say, I don't, I don't know how much more you have to say on hydrogen in particular before we get into the, obviously you should just put up the wires part. Yes. Uh, but put up the dang wires. I really wish that in general, hydrogen internal combustion engines would mature as a technology. 
I'm not sure yeah. if it's you know sort of mechanically possible. I'm not a mechanical sure. engineer. It would be a there are lots of pros and cons with using hydrogen internal combustion from a logistical standpoint, uh, from a sort of uh, like momentum of the industry standpoint and what people use and what infrastructure is set up and this and that. Um, yes. If we're talking about moving forward for a railroad, whether you're going to do wires or hydrogen, hydrogen, like, yeah, you're going to spend a lot of money on infrastructure either way. And that's assuming the technology is the same, which it isn't, um, you know, it, it equally useful, I should say. Yes. Uh, yeah. But man, just comparing sort of the apples to apples of internal combustion with petroleum versus internal combustion with hydrogen, there are significant advantages yes. in theory to hydrogen power. Yeah. If only I've, we could make it not suck. Yeah, I've been mad about I have expressed I have expressed irritation or anger about Canadian Pacific's like hydrogen locomotive initiative stuff before. And a friend has been like, well, what's your problem? This, this, you know, this is far better than diesel combustion. You know, if it makes it, it might not be the ideal solution. And, you know, sidebar, just to mention this, uh, the German government put in a study comparing hydrogen locomotives to other, to other options. And they found that over a 30 year period, they were up to 80% more expensive than electric options and will thus no longer be considered. So mm -hmm. unless that technology matures really fast it's not at you know unless that technology matures real fast i don't think it's the solution that canadian pacific would like you to believe it is and that's half my problem is that i don't think it's the solution that canadian pacific would like me would like us to believe it is you know if you're looking for an efficient green solution you know there's another drain we're circling that nobody wants to acknowledge and i'll get into that shortly but you know Half of what makes me mad about this is that, like, sure, even if it's not the most efficient option, if, you know, in six months or a year or two years, Canadian Pacific said, hey, we really like this hydrogen prototype, working really well, we're converting a bunch of our fleet to hydrogen, that would be good. That would be a lot better than everybody running on diesel electric. That would reduce emissions and it would be a net positive. However, I don't think they're going to do that. I don't trust them to do that because they already, you know, as we just talked about, they already did order a bunch of hydrogen locomotives for a test program, sell them off, and then nothing came of it. And that's what I feel like is going to happen here. They've got the one shiny prototype. They're going to tout around until they go, the technology isn't great, actually, and it's cheaper to just keep the diesel electrics. And then they're going to quietly shove it in a corner once they've gotten their greenwashing out. Yep. And the reason this isn't, you know, I... I don't want to sound like a broken record. There are advantages to hydrogen propulsion. But the reason this, like, doubly doesn't make sense for a railroad is because when people talk about hydrogen internal combustion, they talk about cars a lot. Mm -hmm. Because cars, well, let's face it, you're never going to put up the damn wires for a, a suburb. Uh, yeah, you, you can't, not, you can't make not, cars run on you, overhead wire. You can't wire make cars and... run on overhead wire. But trains are on tracks. Yeah, you have a fixed path. <laughs> you, you can, can make a streetcar. <laughs> you can do the thing that you can... And here is the uniting theme of all of these articles. Here is the primary source of my anger about all of this bullshit. Is that currently the, the thing that everybody is sort of aware of in the back of their minds and refuses to acknowledge. The thing that all of these dumb startups and these greenwashing hydrogen locomotives and these battery electric locomotives are all exist to ign all exist like in spite of all exist to sort of kick the can that these all exist to sort of kick down the road is that electrification with overhead wire is the best thing you could do. It's the you know, put it, building nuclear power plants putting up overhead wire and running all of the trains on Cantonary, most of the trains on Cantonary, like for like terminal switching, for terminal switching short lines, branch lines, you know, maybe a hydrogen locomotive, maybe a battery electric locomotive. I'm not opposed to them in that context, but as a full solution to making the railroads green and the solution that 
everyone is trying to pretend it doesn't exist, that all of this technology exists to pretend we can't do or pretend there's alternatives to, is putting up the goddamn wires and bring <laughs> back the GM6C. And no one wants to do it, and no one wants to talk about it, because no one wants to invest the money. Yep. And, and the... the it's, it's one of these, if you build it, they will come things, too. And I, I'm not going to try to defend uh, railroads doing everything in their power they can to not just run trains. Uh, mm -hmm. But, man, I wish there was an easy sort of... This thing is still cursed. I know people love it, but I don't. Uh, I, 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 it's perfect. I, I hate I, the I middle the truck. I hate it so much. I, uh, Tyler, let's it's GM10. Japan. Yeah, 1975 is a GM6. Uh, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but... I forgot what the hell I was going to say, but basically, uh, there. I wish there was more reliable tech on the market. You know, I suppose right. you could buy. Uh, you know, you could sort of look at where India gets their lo their electric locomotives because they have stuff that's yeah. a similar loading gauge. It, they have a different physical gauge of track, but right. you would start Steel having Japan's to... The, the, what I'm sure is sort of in these railroads' minds when they say, well, we're not electrifying, is, man, where the hell would we get motive power, you know? Yeah. Uh, but you've, they, they've, you know, they're going to have to adapt at some point. Like, yeah. Please. The, yeah, the thing is, a while back when that California, like, environmental regulation thing came up and they were like, oh, there's no suitable technology. On the one hand, there's no suitable technology and it would be too expensive. For the class ones, boo fucking who? Invest in, you know, give, give EMD some money, say, hey, develop us a new electric locomotive, we'll buy it and we'll run it. And invest in electrifying your lines. You have the money, I know you do, because you have stock buyback. Yep. For the short lines, I do understand, and for the short lines, I do think the well, money's tight argument, you know, it makes sense. That's a lot of capital costs that a short line might not necessarily have, which is why I'm mad at, which is why I'm mad at the railroads, but I'm also to an extent mad that the government is, the government is not, like, investing in them. There was, you know, back in the halcyon days of the 70s in the oil crisis, when everyone was kicking electrification, there was a study done by the Canadian by some group, and it was presented at a conference, and they were like, hey, based on what we found, overhead wire electrification might be an overall net positive, and it's something the real and the government should invest in. What we should do is set up a main line. We should set up like a 100 mile stretch of main line as a test case for electrification and see how that goes. Just never done. No one invested in it. Not the government, not the railroad. And it just. Disappointing, dis and and uh, it, it could have it been makes... we could have lived in a better world if the Milwaukee yeah. Road. I yes. will point out in the fifties, the New Haven somebody in New Haven ran the numbers, and it was going to be cheaper. The only thing cheaper than straight electrification and operating costs would have been nineteen twenty nine uh, cost steam. Nineteen fifties steam would have been, still would have been cheaper than diesel electric um at the time which is partially the reason why new haven went with electrification as long as they did um it, that paper was so influential it got to the desk of the president of emd <laughs> wow yeah uh, but... it's a shame that new haven was too busy uh you know embezzling yes, yes. <laughs> the... it's like the, the exact last... wrong railroad the, the to take game... this to <laughs> They gave the hardest battles to not the strongest soldiers, which is why, yeah. Uh, yeah. Really, what it, should have happened is the DNH should have gotten in on the EL merger and then merged with the Milwaukee Road, and then we'd have... Yeah. God. Yeah. I. The last Please. thing I want to say on this topic before I will I will release my therapy hour and we <laughs> on to something else is that what is that like? Be be skeptical because it's so. The reason that they're doing all of these things to pretend that an overhead wire electrification doesn't already exist, like this isn't already a solved problem, is that it's really easy to put a tech startup in the news to give $200,000 to some guys who are like, we're going to revolutionize trains with this thing that obviously <laughs> won't work, 
It's so easy to build one hydrogen locomotive and then quietly shunt it off, or one battery electric locomotive and then quietly shunt it off, because you can get publicity out of putting money into this quote-unquote unproven technology. The reason you don't see them talking about overhead wire electrification is because it works, and the only reason they would have to talk about it is because they were going to do it. They're not going to talk about it because they're not good, they don't want to spend the money to do it, and they can't get any PR out of pretending they're going to do it by, you know, looking into the feasibility of it with this one test case. Yeah, in, in layman's terms, they're doing this, and then, you know, it's not going to work, and then they go, well, we yeah. tried, you know, we tried yeah. something. They only want they only want to talk about things that won't work or will be worse because they don't actually because they don't actually have to invest in them beyond the publicity of testing them. You can't public you can't get any publicity out of testing overhead wire because overhead wire is a technology that already works. Yeah, because it's better. Because it's it, better. Because if they did it, they wouldn't be able to say, "Well, that didn't work. Sorry, we'll move. We're moving on." They would do it, and then they would have to effing explain why they don't want to do that everywhere else, even though it was better. Yes. Anyway. Uh, okay, that's my therapy. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I, I, I feel like uh, I feel like what I have to say really, really pales in comparison to all that. Uh, but East is back. Hi, East. You want to talk uh, about Brightline? They killed some people. Oh. Okay. Uh, one of them is in quite a gruesome way. Oh. But we'll start with some happy ending. Alright. Um. Okay, none of this is happy ending. <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> uh, so, Oops. I think this was the only answer that oh, I'm going to wait it. for. Dude, um, but, uh, there was... No, oh, should I... For some reason, I don't have a link for the one that happened, like, uh, on 92 a couple days ago, where the T two P-42s hit that auto truck and jumped off the rails with the billboard in Comic Sans. Oh, 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 yeah, no, somebody posted that, uh, oh, yeah, this is the wrong Amtrak derailment. Yeah, this oh. is the one that happened in a uh, new station, which canceled a ton of trains. Um, I think it was the engine is jump. That what I, was that in Lakeland? Yeah, it was amazing. Okay, yeah, we do have the article for that. It was it's uh, yeah. Amtrak versus truck. Unfortunately, I don't know where the incredible photo of the Comic Sans <laughs> Hold on. is. I'm sure I can grab it. I'm sure I can get it. Hold on. I'm just gonna look up Amtrak development and it'll be like the third image. Graphic design is my passion. <laughs> yeah. America, the world's last best hope. Right? Something like that on the billboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's a quote from, from an Abraham, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. It's like, America, the world's last best tough. Yes, I got it. I got it. Hold on. God. This is this is just the image that we're going to have. I'm going to put this up for the entirety this, of this uh, Florida segment. Because this, this ca encapsulates Florida incredibly well. This could be a political cartoon, right? <laughs> like, this is... Yeah. Can we, it, can we get this be. drawn as a cartoon, please? Like, it's so... It's... Sometimes, sometimes life make life parodies itself better than fiction ever could. Wow. Then uh, the next day, the okay. southbound so version of like the train ninety one, you know, the tree, and it could be shattered to find the end. Yeah, oh. that's outstanding. Um, there's no article um, to it, but yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, the end of the was driving the end at the time. Thank you. It's okay. Um, but there's just he just took a photo of it in Miami Station and he oh, like the, shattered. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'll cover that. Um, okay, so, uh, Brightline is like on Hollywood. The car was going to cross the tracks and then made a left, like, in Ashland and went on the tracks. Yeah. And everyone's calling it insurance fraud. Uh, okay. Uh, Brightline hit and killed the person in Lake Worth. Yeah. Uh, none, they were found dead at the scene. Oh. Uh, the Miller car was, uh, hit in Brevard County. Uh, also oh, turned out there. Oh. Um, there was another one where they hit a man's man who had 163rd. 
Um, no updates on his condition. Though judging by the previous article saying 88 deaths and this article saying 85 deaths. Sides? And only two other deaths have been. Oh no, he might have survived. The sites are really and therefore they're dark. This is, this is, we're just keeping track of Brightline's ever increasing body count. Yeah. Um, so Brightline slides. hit a guy, flung him into the path of the oncoming freight train, and then the freight train oh, hit Jesus him and ran over. Christ. Oh my god. Oh my god. Um, if you can imagine, uh, he died on the scene. Yeah, I mean, I figured that, that you don't, you're not okay after that. Yeah, yeah um. A woman walked down the protective area when a Brightline uh, train hit her, flung her into the path of the oncoming FEC train, and then the FEC train ran over her. Oh, for God's sake. That's, That's brutal. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, don't, don't, uh, you know, sort of, don't step in front of trains, um, just in general. In Florida in particular, but just like in general. Uh, there was... Brightline also. Oh, okay, go ahead. No, there were so many people in the Ashland camp waiting for their train by just standing in the gauge. Nice. <laughs> um, Brightline tickets went on sale for the Orlando yeah, extension where they go for the ten thousand dollars of grade crossing, and that's gonna eviscerate yeah, someone. <laughs> um, like I can't wait for the first article to come out on the second day of running. Yep. Um, tickets on sale. Yeah, that's uh, I think I talked about the prices last time was on, just sort of relative to the order article. Um, it's like $130 one way for premium, and $79 one way for, like, not first class. I mean, that's Pretty not, man. that's not terrible. Yeah, we did talk about it, but it's not terrible. It's, it's uh, much, it's, but... It's, yeah, it's relatively expensive when you can take Amtrak for $38. Hmm. Like, you do get the, like, three hours faster, because, you know, it's Amtrak. Um, <laughs> or because it's very, like, compared to Amtrak, but, like, it's, it's a very steep cost, in my opinion, especially when you can buy tickets from anywhere on the southern part of the system for 10 bucks. Yeah. I don't know, it seems like a, it seems like a relatively, like, competitive style rate, though. I feel like people are definitely going to go for it. Yeah, see, you see how I just wish it would maybe be like $10 cheaper, so it would be a more legit thing, as opposed to needing to go somewhere. They need to put it in a low, they need to put in a low price fare for like Florida residents or something. The the, the Florida pass, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you, get your, also... you get your Florida man card when you turn 18. Hmm. If he survives the long. Yeah. Um, Brightline is also adding Starlink to its services, so you can get Wi-Fi while they're going through the middle of nowhere. We finally uh, found an actual uh, use for Starlink. Amazing. Well, that and, like, Africa. I think that That's true. Um, and then I have an article Why? talking you about our uh, potential future Brightline oh, stations. Yeah, they have a picture of a Brightline train set, and then directly under it's it, it's like subscribe for $4. Light. So... <laughs> All right. Well, we know. Gonna, we know that Brightline's involved. I'm gonna go open Google Maps and give you my best guesses. Okay. All right. So, so stop one, Atlanta. Wait. Uh, no. So, uh, probably I would imagine Port St. Lucie, uh, Fort Pierce, and maybe Melbourne would be three potential uh, stations. And was Cassett made? And and uh and uh and, uh, and uh, yeah yeah on the uh, flagless folly that went to folly. Um, also helping try uh, try also helping Brightline trials future ex that uh, ex uh, expansion is set to begin to November to Miami Central. So Miami Central is actually have one one train service now. Um, which is good for everyone except for Trail because of the EPA standards, like for the station itself, and none of the trial equipment actually needs that because it's like semi enclosed. Mm -hmm. So they have to like rebuild a bunch of this stuff. Um, and what doesn't help is that like they can't pop out instantly. Hmm? 
Um, so they rebuilt, I think, two of the trash workflow units. Um, it's that those things are in very poor condition. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll see how this goes. This also talks about the federal grant to uh, replace 30% uh, of its rail uh, vehicles, though I somehow doubt that'll actually be much, considering that the November is what, four months away, and there's no, you know, there's no, no company in America that can reduce 20 new passenger cars in the span of four months here. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but... Yeah, that is unfortunate. Yeah. And we had the thing I really wanted to talk about, but I kind of already got all my rants out about it, like, um, in, in chat, like, a month ago or something. Um, what, the bridge? The, yeah, the nonsensical idea to have twice hourly bridge openings on the bridge. Yeah, that's... Uh, which would see up to, like, 40 trains a day. It's always the name of yeah, my guess. Maybe like 35 I think it's like 26 Berlin trains plus like 10, 11, or 12 uh, drought FTC trains and then like 12 below 2. Mm -hmm. oh. And this bridge is single track um, because they were complaining that we can't close the bridge to upgrade it to two, two tracks. So it's single track, which is going to cause some. Disastrous delays for the, the cities that are serving this area. Because what's going to happen is right now it's going to have priority for like the 10 minutes the bridge is allowed to be closed. So both right lines are going to go over and the freight train is just going to be held there. Yeah. Probably blocking crossing gates for two miles. <laughs> yeah. And, this, and of course, you know, these towns built on the FEC, so they're basically like cutting towns in half and, you know, God forbid they have a bridge. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's the the bridge thing is. I, I I don't I don't I don't understand everything that's going on here, but it seems like they need to come sort of come to some sort of better agreement. Uh, although yeah, it does look like there's room in their right of way. I don't know. It looks like they're building more in this it, like, There's um, room in the right of way to build double track up to the bridge. It, it was double track at one point. The issue is they don't, they, they're not letting the bridge be down long enough for them to double track it. Well, they may end up having to, if it, if push comes to shove, they may end up having to build another bridge next to it. Uh, I mean, that's likely what may end up happening. But at the same time, that's going to, it's, it's going to be weird because there's a highway that goes over it, so you can't build a bridge high. Mm -hmm. Because again, the highway goes like right over it. And also, that's one of the crossings that's going to be blocked, it's the gateway roundabout. Oh my god, no, you sent this crossing before. <laughs> this is one of the crossings that's definitely going to be blocked. This makes me upset. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. What? No, this it's is not. beautiful. This is something real special. I just, uh, oh my not God. special. No, you know what's what is really interesting about this bridge? Because you said, oh, it's been double tracked before, and I'm looking at it from you know space and going, it does not look like it, uh, because the bridge deck is very narrow, but the draw span, yeah, predates the bridge. Uh, you can tell the draw span was definitely double tracked. The draw span was double tracked, and then they must have demolished and rebuilt the entire bridge to be single track at some point. Why um, would you do this? Well, okay. Um, something, something. The 1960s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's entirely possible that the bridge got like obliterated in a hurricane, and the draw span was the only thing left, or something. That's very on brand for Florida. That would be yeah. very on brand for Florida. Because, like, the entire FEC was double track, but when they went down a single track, they just didn't remove the spans. Mm -hmm. So every every bridge you can see, well, every still surviving bridge that you can see is, is double track. Even, like, there were, like, Gerda spans down in Florida before Brightline came by. Um, I'll go find a photo. It's really cool because, like, I didn't know it was double track until I went over this one road, and it's like, huh. Why are there two bridges here? <laughs> and it's really cool because when Brightline came by, they just relayed the tracking right over it. 
Oh, I just realized when I looked up Stewart, Florida to find it, it took me directly to the roundabout. Nice. There's also a... <laughs> I, I'm looking at this photo, the vitamin and supplement store on the tracks in the roundabout. <laughs> you can get your daily daily dose of bright line to the face if you wait here long enough. And if you go slightly, slightly north of it, there's a second roundabout. Yeah, it's not as bad, but it's it's uh, pretty bad. And then there's a four-way intersection to the roundabout. And it's, it's, it's... Yeah, this is going to be something for uh, the Brightline execs and the Coast Guard to, like, fist fight about. Um, they're going to have to figure something out. I think what's going to happen is they're going to maliciously comply and then block half of Stewart, Florida from crossing each other. And say, oh, sorry, not our fault. Got to, you know, go yeah, we get, the get, get them out of the Coast Guard. Um, yeah. Which... And, like, they've double-tracked the uh, roundabout. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I was Which, looking at... If you go on the street view, it's double track now. Oh, the terrible roundabout or the other one? Yeah, the terrible one. How did they do For the second track? Forcibly. Oh. Oh, I see what they did. They have they have narrowed the uh, the roundabout a little bit. Yeah, well, um, they're, they're going to have to figure it out. They're going to have to get that second track of a bridge in somehow. I know it's. Not I, I, I can feel the malicious contact. Also, um, because it goes down to a single track and because of how old the bridge is, I think Red Line's like limited in speed there. Mm. Which is also going to cause issues. Um, and also, if you do have to park freight trains, you know, freight trains aren't exactly quick things to accelerate. No, it's, you know, you're going to have one freight train that's going to take the entirety of the bridge closure time to accelerate and get yeah. across the bridge. Uh, I mean, the. The bridge speed limit is kind of a skill issue on their own part, but yeah. I mean, well, also because it's a very sh decently sharp because curve after. Be... Yeah. Which, you know, again, can't really do much with because either so you're, you know, destroying half the bay by flooding with land or, want... well, like demolishing a ton of industry. So it's like, now you just to off the bay and, and, like, suck all the water out. Take a take a page from, you know, like the, the, the Netherlands. Dutch, yeah. 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 Now, I can see how you would manage this. Uh, if you wanted to peel off the tracks, go a little bit more parallel to the Northwest Dixie Highway, highway, yeah, highway. Yeah. start gaining an elevation the moment you get out from under the bridge. Oh, that's Route 1. Of course it is. Uh, yeah. Have your draw span, come back down, and then you, you can make your curve a little bit wider at the north end. Uh, but, you know, I'm not an engineer for Brightline, so they're, I mean, they're going to figure it out in the way they're going to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Again, I think it's going to be malicious compliance, and so the automobiles complain too much, and the boats have to. And the boats have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, on the other hand, Amtrak needs to start raising a stink because, uh, well, I guess I can generally generally file this under uh, CN needs to get it together because yeah. apparently they're just heavily speed limiting the Adirondack on the north side of the border and Amtrak yep. is like we cannot run the train at 10 miles per hour so we're just going to not run the train I guess uh, yeah it does make uh, it does make CN look pretty bad it does make Amtrak look pretty bad uh Hopefully they can get this figured out, because the Adirondack was, like, the last thing to recover post-COVID. Like, the last... They just got it back into Canada. Uh, yeah. And now it's not even going north of Albany. So all the stuff in upstate New York due north of Albany, like Saratoga Springs and, uh, you know, sort of uh, Port Henry and stuff like that, up to Plattsburgh and uh, Rouse's Point are just not... They, they no longer have train again. Yeah, that uh, run the train more places. Uh, screw CN. Like they're just being little coward bitches. the The Reddit post says like the Reddit post says the according to the Reddit post, Amtrak's like, oh, we've been fulfilling all our financial commitments. Uh, but quote, you know, they would not comment on whether they had been fulfilling their financial commitments during COVID, and like the train wasn't running. 
I feel like I feel like it's entirely fair that they weren't paying to maintain the infrastructure for the train when they weren't running their train on it. <laughs> that that's fair, yeah. Uh yeah, and... that's right. So CN has sort of said like yeah, sorry, we're slow ordering this whole bit because it hasn't been uh, maintained very much. And Amtrak is saying, well, why haven't you maintained it? And CN is saying, because you haven't paid us to maintain it. And Amtrak has been saying, of course, well, we weren't using it for the last three years. Why would we be paying for it? Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I love how CN is like, well, if you gave us the money to upgrade it so we could lift the feed restrictions... Like, they couldn't just do that themselves? <laughs> like, you know, we, we need the money, uh, federally funded agency. We're, we're just so hurting for it, says the class one railroad. You know, and it's even it's even probably uh, more complicated by the fact that CN is outside of the U.S. conveniently, because the last time this happened in this neck of the woods, it was Pan Am not maintaining anything, because they're Pan Am. Yeah. Uh, and... <laughs> Amtrak just saying, like, you know, basically, F you, fix your stuff, here's some money, do the thing. Uh, you know, like, we will force you to make this not suck, uh, or we'll just go around a different way. And that's sort of what happened. Yeah. Uh, and now we have the Knowledge Corridor up to Greenfield. Of course, now Pan Am is gone also. I don't know all of the sort of legal hoops that were jumped through or logistics of that. I just know that this problem has happened before and it was resolved with political strong arming, which is something that CN is maybe a little bit immune to because they happen to be on the other side of the border. They're also a, a class one. So, you know, hard yeah. to find someone willing to strong arm them. Well, you say that, but they have managed to keep uh, the Southwest chief going over Raton Pass all this time. So. Okay, yes, but counterpoint, uh, Via had to add, like, a 24 hours to their schedule because CN kept delaying them so much, and the government is just like, well, yeah, that's how it is. Oh, yeah, you know what, that's fair. That's, um, it, that just solidifies that CN, uh, sucks. Yeah, CN is garbage and bad. CN Renationalize CN. Wait, didn't, oh, Tyler left, uh, he had to go. He didn't get to talk yeah. about the, um, he didn't get to talk about the U UP and the Sunset Limited, which the STB is investigating Sunset Limited timekeeping. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I would like the STB, again, it sucks that this is happening over the border in Canada, and somehow I get the feeling that the Canadian government, I, I mean, if they don't give a damn about the, uh, the actual canadian train having to add 24 hours to the schedule they definitely won't care about this yeah yeah which it is sucks. a shame you know what's even more annoying what's even more i don't annoying? know which way that the train goes because there are two options but right on the other side of the border right past rouse's point it is a dead straight line for about 50 miles yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, so, you know. Um... Yeah, ride, riding via, it was fun because it was mostly dead straight lines through countryside. Uh, but the train still went like 30, 35 for a long time. You could shave like a good hour off the schedule. If you just upgrade the train, if you just upgrade the track to like 60, I swear some of the spur lines here are better laid than the track that Via is forced to run on <laughs> to get to Sarnia, Ontario. I wanted to talk to you more about Via because I didn't they just sort of... They didn't... You know, they, they cancelled something, but I don't want to get too far off track because this podcast is already running very long. Uh, yeah. So... Oh. That's a cool picture, East. Thank you. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you can... I like to think that the crane is named Stuart. <laughs> yeah, yeah and the caption is Stuart, and it's I know it's the name of the town, but like, look, it's Stuart, it's Stuart Little. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is 1925 when they installed the double span when they were expanding to double tracks. Cool, nice. And now they're back to single track. Sucks to suck. Thank you, 1960s. Yeah, sucks to suck. 
Thank you, probably a hurricane. They got rocked like a hurricane. It, it's just the way it goes. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it for this episode of the Terminus Podcast. Uh, we have more trading cards coming out soon. And... Yep. By, by trading should, cards. By trading cards. Uh, again, there are like eight packs of Batch 2 left. And I, that includes the stuff that was spoken for in the Kickstarter, and nev they never sent me their addresses. So I never got to send it out. So I'm just refunding yeah. them and reselling uh, these these packs because I can't, you know, they've just been sitting in a box for the last several months. Uh, my hope is to get Batch 3 done by the color, by the not Colorado Narrow Gauge Convention, the National Narrow Gauge Convention, which happens to be in Colorado, uh, which I will be attending in part. So hopefully yeah. if we have that done by then, we will be releasing those cards, you'll be able to buy them. Um, and we will also have another season of Royales, and then maybe a season of Loco Dome after the convention. So... Given that, that Loco Dome? That, uh, yeah, that Royale season starts... This coming week, I'll actually be putting the polls oh, up. No. I'll actually be putting the polls up for topics for the Royals after this podcast is done, or maybe tomorrow morning. Anyway, yeah. um, that's a uh, maintenance away. Unless anybody else has anything they would like to add, uh, go on. Don't go looking for me on social media. That's all. I <laughs> you put your not you put your anti-socials. Yeah, my <laughs> anti-socials. Did you know the FEC had dual purpose for four hours? What was the dual purpose for? A freighted passenger. I feel like oh, those okay. four O's were dual purpose. Oh, uh, four four twos. My bad. Oh, Atlanta. four twos. Okay. okay. Yeah, that makes that's more interesting. Yeah, that's that's more uncommon and unique. All right. Uh, Tyler says, "Westbound Sunset Limited for latest train and Amtrak." What else? Do I have from you guys? Um, I think I said eight. Did you say eight? Okay. I'll, I'll yeah. Continue. I'll dead. continue accepting that as an answer. There is an uh, eight. Is there a train sixty nine? No, there's not a train sixty nine. Damn. Dang. Is there a four twenty? I don't think there's a four twenty. I don't know where that would be in the number sequence. I don't think Amtrak has any... Well, the Lakeshore Limited's extensions are the only trains that start with four. Oh, wait, the Valley Flyer also starts with four. But they don't have a four uh, Okay, apparently it's only an E unit. Oh, yeah, that's not what you're looking for. Um. Right, so we have one, we have eight. Um, Eastbound Sunset Limited. Eastbound Sunset Limited. I was, okay. I was considering the Sunset Limited. Uh, Westbound Sunset Limited. Okay, so you and Tyler are, are uh, on this train, train number one, 56 minutes late at Deming, New Mexico. Uh, not the latest that? train on Amtrak, sur su surpassed by the Eastbound Sunset Limited, which is an hour and 59 minutes late at Lake Charles, Louisiana. It has almost arrived. Um, and number eight, right? Empire Builder to Chicago. Three hours and one minute late at Harve, Montana. And also, 12 hours and six minutes late at St. Cloud, Minnesota. That is the latest train on Amtrak. There is a eight and a half hour late California Zephyr, a four hour late California Zephyr, a three hour late Southwest Chief, and a three and a half hour late California Zephyr. As on top of a Ten and a half hour late Cardinal. My God. Hey, I Hammer. Was... What's oh going God. on in Toronto? I was about yeah, to Toronto's say Toronto's some... real bad. Something went down in Toronto. Like all of the cor... so many of the core services are black. The the corridor to Sarnia only just left Toronto. It's gonna hit Kitchener nearly two hours late. I could go see it. It, it gets worse the further you get out from Toronto. Three hours oh like up by Ottawa, it's bad. Three and a half hours late. Oh, so what happened to that? A cellar. Yeah, there's a two hour late a cellar, which just passed Providence. It's currently this going 140 not... miles per hour. Not a good day for Amtrak. Look in it. Yeah. 
Anyway. I wonder uh, why I ate it so late, because it, it was only two hours late, and then just 13 hours late in one stop. The uh, engines broke. Yo, yo, what is the, like, that 12 hour late one? Uh, yeah, no, don't know. Just super, super late. No, like, oh, it doesn't say it's what it eight. is. Yeah, it's 8. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, you said it right. It's, uh, it's another 8. <laughs> Empire Builder Chicago, 12 hours and six, and 6 minutes late. And yeah, just like you said, it was 2 hours and 60 minutes late at Harv. And then at Malta, it was seven and a half hours late. And then at Glasgow, it was 13 hours late. And those are stops that are... Yeah, they're they're supposed to be about an hour apart a piece, and it took them eight hours to get between them. So, uh, oops, that's a lot of damage. Thank you, Gloria. Yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, that's the podcast. Let me just double check that nobody else got any. All right, I got a. I got a point. East got a point for something. Why did East have a point? I don't remember. Uh, uh, I said DVD. Like, oh, oh, and Jader. No, it was Jader had a point for bringing up at the rail yard. It no, East got a point for, yeah, East got a point for basically doing a bonk or a, a sex joke. I don't think it was just saying giggity, but it was. No, I think it was literally just saying giggity. No, I don't. Think I mean, it's it recorded, so we can go back. And <laughs> yeah. Okay, the yeah, we'll check going the by. tapes. I'm, I'm sure, good. I'm, I'm sure that we're gonna go check the tapes. Yeah, yeah I definitely will do that. Fact check. Um, oh, there's, there's the and all right, well, I'll do the uh, terminations here then. East, with a point. I wish I had more time. Uh, and I also have one point, and I would just like to say I too wish East had more time, uh, because I could have listened to. I, I can listen to East Adventures in Japan for uh, hours. Uh, I think Jader's next. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't like my internship, but, but I can take comfort in that I only have five days left. Fair. Yeah. Five days. I thought it was going to be something like I'm an adult and I can buy brass. Well, that too. Uh, next up, oh, did Tyler leave? Oh, Tyler did leave one. Yeah. Happy early birthday, sports models. For the DNS, the 470s. Or the, the NRGW 470s, which is the K28s. Yeah. Based. Yes. Good little Should engines. Mark. Hopefully we'll yes. see some next year. Uh, and then Hemlock. Uh, is this hauntology? And it is a picture. It is a picture of one of the experimental electrics number nineteen seventy six that EMD made, sitting outside EMD's facility, backdropped by uh, E eight, some Amtrak E eight. The photo being called EMD's fast in a future that didn't happen. Th this is hauntology to me. Gotcha. I had to look up what hauntology was. Basically, it's the ghost of lost futures. I see. Um, anyway, uh, that's a podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, there was a there was a suggestion brought up while East was not here to have a half episode where East just gets to talk about Japan adventures for uh, as long as he wants. So, uh, you know, if I could... I I'm already dragging Tyler into too much. East, you could talk Tyler into that. I'm yes. sure we can. <laughs> it it's just Ellis sitting there quietly while East and Tyler talk for three hours. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it oh. will. It, it'll be me frantically trying to keep up with which picture is correct. Ellis yes. is Ellis is just the cameraman. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, the next it, Sunday driving, it's just like photo dumping. Honestly, yeah. though, that is a perfect Sunday driving sort of topic. I mean, we won't have to. I I won't be able to show any pictures really, but at least we could. Uh, cover the rest of the adventures in full detail uh that that yeah. expects us to do sunday driving however anyway uh we're about to hit three hours so uh bye damn only thanks. three bye. hours yeah thanks bye. uh thanks to uh, everyone that came on this podcast and watched this podcast and steven wes and 
virtual rail fan call. and in case of emergency call conrail we'll see you in a while goodbye all five of you to watch this thank you